The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this bike on. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 102. I am Gav, this is Dan. Hello! I didn't think you were going to answer then and just leave me hanging and be like, <laughs> what the hell? People will be like, what is this shit I've just tuned in on on their FM radios? FM, AM, baby. AM radio. <laughs> <laughs> AM radio, AM radio, that'd be like, that reminds me of just sitting in my friend's back of my friend's car when I was a kid. His dad walking, um, driving along, rolling up cigarettes while he's driving along, listening to football on the AM radio on a Saturday afternoon. And it's just been like, I hate all of this. I hate everything that's going on right now. <laughs> just like the, the sound quality of AM radio. Uh, he's just rolling a cigarette, not paying any attention to the road. Um, I don't no seatbelts back football. then either. No, I'm right? in the back, no seatbelt. Yeah. No, that's yeah. not it. Well, there we go. That's episode 102. See you again, guys. Thanks for joining in. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's a safety awareness uh, podcast. Uh, I'm excited, Gav, because I'm excited for this episode. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I was really um, surprised, actually, when you agreed to review this film, uh, or these, these two films, because it's not really something we normally cover, um, but you're, you know, you're very open and I was pleased to hear that. So when I said to you that we'd be covering, uh, um, you know, the, a film about a toy that comes to life and uh, a little boy called Andy, you know, uh, I mean, just off the bat, who's your favourite character? Would you say it's Buzz Lightyear or Woody, the cowboy? Well, I'm actually a big fan of the uh, uh, Toy Story series, actually. Toy Story 4, I actually quite enjoyed it. It came out. been to the cinema, see all of them. Um... Uh, I'd say Woody over Buzz. You? I love Woody over Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we are playing jokes, listeners, of course, because we're not reviewing Toy Story, although that might be something we cover one day, but we are reviewing a, a Toy Story of sorts, but a toy horror story, aren't we, Gav? Yeah, it's funny, and, uh, to, funny to hear that similarity when you're watching a movie or something, you're like, oh, it's like uh, rocks hitting <laughs> together, making a spark in my head. Oh. <laughs> Some people have cogs. Gav has rocks hitting together and sparking oh. in his head. Yeah. Ooh. We are covering Chance Play, the original Chance Play from 1988, and the follow up from two years later, Chance Play 2 Indeed. from 1990. Yeah. Exciting. Um, and definitely, we this won't be our first look at this franchise. We're going to come back at some point it's and nice. probably at least in the next couple. It's nice we can just drop in and be like, oh, let's do three and four. Let's do. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think so. And I think three and four are quite strong um, as well. So I'll be excited to cover those. But, but yeah, that's what we're covering it's almost, this week. It's almost, so. uh, it's almost a bit of a cliche nowadays, the uh, the doll coming to life. When you have all like, the Annabelles and all these other movies popping up and stuff. Um, and Chucky, Chucky was kind of pretty OG in that that factor, really, wasn't he? Yeah, I guess you had like the Puppet Master toys, uh, the films, um, but I, don't, I can't think of too many films where a toy comes to life. You know, the, maybe the toy in Poltergeist, but this was like definitely in, in the in the realm of horror. This is yeah, because you did yeah. have small soldiers, uh, like you say, Toy Stories. Yeah. Uh, so that was a thing. Um, it's always a thing having the little toys come to life. And it's a great thing. Like Toy Story, I thought it was a brilliant concept. And um, so, what came first? Oh, this came before Toy Story, didn't it? Toy Story yeah, would have been 18, early nineties. Yeah. yeah. I'm still amazed though. I know this isn't about Toy Story, but I'm still amazed at how the effects on Toy Story. If you watch it now, it still looks fucking really good. Like the first. One. It's just that Toy Story Four looks even better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the first one still like is passable by all. That's no, a great Boys. movie. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. fantastic film. And, and going to the effects of the Chucky in this, really good. Uh, I, I watched both of these with my eldest, Jay, and Jay, on the second one, part two, was like, 
oh, Chucky looks a lot better. There's a lot more movement and uh, Oh, features. my God, yeah, yeah. And I hadn't, I, I can't, I hadn't even know. It's great watching Nip with Jay now because Jay's doing film studies at school. So Jay would be like, so the camera's in that angle because burr, 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 burr. And I'll be like, oh, okay, all the light's over in that side of the face. To and I'll, oh, okay, cool. You know, it's quite funny having that like, yeah, discussion. Yeah, uh, I mean, what, what's exciting about these two films when we get into them is it's just all practical. Mm. You know, there was no CGI at this point. And actually watching, weirdly, my wife watched quite a lot of part two with me. She was trying to figure out with me. In fact, we were wound quite a few scenes trying to figure out how they did some of the stuff with Chucky where he's like walking along you know well, you been, could probably that's probably a little boy it, but... isn't it when it's walking oh no no there's oh, like you mean definitely the actual wide shots oh okay yeah when you saw yeah, the leg yeah. shots you're just like oh it's a little boy you know yeah or just even just someone just you know doing the pretend puppet legs with sticks or something it could be anything but yeah. it's amazing mm-hmm. so there we go that's what we're doing Chucky and we've also got the time machine ready to go to take us back to uh, the year 2002. 2002. See, I don't. Nothing jumps out. Maybe something like Cabin Fever, possibly. I'm not sure. We'll have a we'll have a look when we when we head back and see what goes on. Um, it was all a bit of an anticlimax. The early 2000s, really, weren't they? After yeah. after the the Y2K didn't happen, and uh, you know. But we'll have a look. We'll see what happens. Which is funny because I mean, Slash has had like a little boom for like three years. But, but they kind of flooded it, didn't they? Like, Urban Legend, Urban Legend 8, and, you know... Yeah, the late 90s or early 2000s, and then it kind of... I mean, well, that's, that's the exciting thing about the, the time machine, is we, we just get to re- really understand where horror was each year, and Did you know peaks and troughs. Scream 5 has finished principal uh, filming? I did, and I'm really disappointed with the title. I don't know, what the is it? Is it not just Scream 5? No, it, it's called Scream they're doing a Rambo uh, I just think that's the shit I'd rather it was Scream 5 see, I really like see, the, the idea of way, the number really the only reason you should do that kind of like uh, First Blood 1, 2, 3 Rambo is I think that Sly at the time thought well, this will be the last one I do um, and oh, I'm just called Rambo that doesn't sound like Sly but just go no, with me on that go, <laughs> just go with me go with me on it and uh, I think but he did it with wouldn't... Rocky, so, didn't he? Rocky Balboa. Yeah, see, like that. Um, but the thing <laughs> is, though, they wouldn't be thinking of this because they're going to be thinking, this could be a cash cow that keeps on going. And they're continuing making screams, so why are you doing the whole go with just the name rather than a number afterwards? So unless, yeah, they're, I, unless, I think... they're, unless they're putting the bag and going, Boom, that's it. But to do that, you have to kill Sydney. Yeah. And go. Oh, that would be cool if they do that, wouldn't it? Yeah. And well, that's the way you have to go if you're going to do this, I think. So that might even be an indication of it. God, I might have broken it and already spoiled it. But... Well, I'm, but the speculation, you know, they've got to kill off one of the main characters, haven't they? They've got to kill Courtney, they've got to kill, or, or they've it, got to kill, yeah. you know, Dewey's got to go, someone's got to go. Gail. Gail will probably go. Yeah, or Dewey. I mean, I'd be I, he would be the one that would break my heart the most, I think, if he died. Yeah, funny uh, enough, though, he was supposed to be killed in the first one, but they liked uh, he, he tested well, so they, oh, brought, they brought him back, so he didn't die. And he became one of my favourite characters, really. Yeah, um, yeah, I love the screen movies, I oh, really I do. do. Yeah. Um, and I watched three again recently, um, we, just we because could, it was on the Horror Channel. We could always do a commentary for that one Halloween, couldn't we? I'd be up for that. I mean, we've only that'd reviewed the first one, but so we, we could, could commentary the first one because that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, because that'd it's be really, when well, that'd be really meta when they're watching the uh, the. Halloween on the house and we're sitting there watching them and, and then if we had a killer walk by in the background that'd be well meta and then we could get someone to do a commentary of us doing a commentary of maybe oh we could do a God, maybe, maybe we could mind. do a what about we if we did a commentary of the commentary track on screen oh don't <laughs> just literally like, we won't be able to podcast the rest of the show because my brain had just been like Woo-hoo. okay well I'll stop it there we're talking of Rambo uh, and films that we've watched funnily enough I did watch not the newest Rambo but I did re-watch um, Rambo or John Rambo as it's called um, the one that came out in 2008 I think it was that's yeah that, that, yeah, well, that was Rambo that was and uh, I'd only seen it once, and it Great didn't movie. really... It got banned in most cinemas in the UK, but, uh, um, you which is killed. weird. You'd be killed if you own it in Burma. 
yeah, it's crazy. But I rewatched it. It was on one of the TV shows over here in the UK. And my God, that film is one of the most violent things I've it's ever fucking, seen. And even the beginning, the opening documentary type stuff, you're like, oh. When he, when he gets that gun on the back of that Jeep, <laughs> and he, <laughs> that guy just turns into mince meat. He just takes him out, it, like the minigun in Predator with all the leaves. Yeah. yeah. But it's... um. I tell you what, good film. I like it's it. It's a great film. I love really the whole good s- film. the sniper bit. I love the mercenaries that go in and he playing it cool, like oh, I don't do no, I don't. I just fish around on my boat. You know, I quite like the fact that he keeps it quiet. Then he still goes in and follows them. They're going, "What are you doing here, man? What are you doing here?" Yeah. That, that bald guy, the English one. Yeah. Fuck off! Oh, I'm gonna come along anyway. Fuck off! Why wow, this is just meaningless nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you, Patreon supporters. Is, Thank you. The thing is, as you as you're saying it, I'm picturing Sly in my head saying that to somebody. So I understood it exactly what you meant. So yeah, I watched that. Um, I also watched another film which you and Sarah almost dared me to watch. You said Paging Dan Bone, and I thought, oh, I've been wanting to check this one out for ages. So I'll bump this one up. Can I have a ten percent fee? Have I earned ten percent finance fee? Oh, I want money back from you because I paid ninety. <laughs> to rent this from Prime. Yeah, and uh, yeah. this was Sharktopus versus Whalewolf. Sharktopus versus Whalewolf, that's correct, yeah. And how did that go? Oh, God, it's one of the worst I've seen out of this bunch. It should be good because you've got... How, they, how were they looking, the creatures? Um, the we- the Whalewolf looked all right. So basically, the one whale-wolf. guy was a werewolf yeah. who, who infused with Orca's DNA. How? So he then... Because there was a German woman with big boobs doing experiments on him. <laughs> and he became a werewolf orca whale hybrid. Um, all the while, because as you probably know, following these films as I do, yeah. uh, this is the third film in the Sharktopus um, series. Uh, the first wow. one was Sharktopus. Then you had Sharktopus versus Mega Tarana Tar- Tar- or something. And this is the third one. Mega so Tarana Parana? Something like that. So whilst this werewolf whale orca is running around the city destroying it, you've also got the sharktopus in another area just getting, you know, destroying everything. And what happens? The guy from Starship Troopers, Casper Van Dien, he comes into it and he brings them together for a giant smackdown in the middle of an American football stadium. Well, he refs, refs a f- fight. Pretty much. He bring he lures them into the middle of a football stadium and then puts electrified fencing all around it and they have to just do this massive face-off. Yeah, but what, what was their plan? Like, one of them's going to defeat the other, but then what, how have they got to get rid of the other one? I don't know, Gav. It doesn't go any further than that with the plot. It's a brilliant plot, isn't it? Uh, uh, how did they think that up? Um, I think they literally pull things out of a hat with these films and go, yeah, make that. Do you know how fun that would be, though? But it actually, it wouldn't, though, because then you start writing the movie, and I don't know how much fun that would be if you're under pressure. Is it, it, hang on a minute. Isn't that what Golden Globus pretty much did in the 80s? They pulled shit out of a hat and then threw millions of dollars at it and went, yeah, go make that. But then again, you want these movies, because I guess these dudes... Who, who's is this like, who's that company that did the uh, uh, Snakes on a Train? and Snakes on a Train? I need to see that. Yeah, that is, they'd always take them... As soon as the movie's coming out, you'd go into Woolworths, a uh, defunct shop in England now, um, but probably maybe still in America, I have no idea. Um, and you'd be... As soon as it's coming out, they'd, instead of Jurassic Park, they'd, not Jurassic Pork, because that's probably the porn parody, but the Jurassic... Dork, I don't know, something else. You no, know, there's like Triassic Park and, and there stuff you go. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And, and that then, was a certain company, wasn't it, that did those, I think? Yeah, there's like um, Asylum Pictures do a lot That's of it. those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a few companies that make these but, sort of movies. Oh, so. okay, okay, so there's a lot of different companies, yeah. Yeah, there's like two or three main ones. Otherwise, they don't fucking sleep over that place. Because no. there's so many. They're churning them out constantly. And Amazon Prime are just like, yeah, give us it all, yeah. Because they are mindless fun. And the reason I wanted to watch that one, I wanted something mindless to watch, is because I I just finished blitzing Twin Peaks season one, two, and three. Uh, and 
season three. You need a break from David Lynch's mind at times. I can it understand. It melted my brain. One of those episodes on season three, it's like the fifth or sixth one or something, and you're just sitting there going, what is this episode even about? It's just shapes and... Is this like a long music video? What is yeah. this? And then all of a sudden, the Nine Inch Nails turn up in the middle and start doing a, an amazing performance, and you're like, I don't know what is going on, but I love it. Thank you, David Lynch, but this is weird. It was good, though, wasn't it? Mm, Gav. I mean, I talked about you it in our Patreon. Quickly, episodes. so it must have been really like all you were eating, sleeping, and pooping. Do you know what I mean? I was doing between four and seven or eight episodes a day. So it was really uh, like fresh. So you were really like in the story, like you're constantly on it. So how was that? Yeah, the whole thing. Because I watched. Well, I did the whole of season one over a weekend. Because that's only what ten episodes, not even that probably. Uh, I think it's so twelve. I did, then the second one's I, so like twenty-four, maybe. Yeah, so I did that one probably over the course of a week or so and finished with Fire Walk With Me. And then, like, I went straight into season three and it was it was so lovely to see all these characters because I didn't know anything about season three, so I didn't know who was going to come back and who wasn't. Yeah. And obviously the majority of characters do come back. I was gutted that Harry Truman didn't come back. Um, it was nice seeing people pop up, but it was nice to see Thingy's last performance, who was the FBI agent that really didn't like... Uh... Albert, yeah. Albert, because obviously he passed, didn't he? Well, a few people did, didn't they? From yeah, this... Bowie. Bowie was in it. Wasn't Bowie it? and um, the guy from Alien. Uh, what's his name? I um, can't remember his name now. Um, Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. Um, a few people did. And the log lady, you could tell she was about to pass because she was really unwell in, in her scenes. But it was incredible and daring. It was, it was, uh, when, they, when I found out they were going back there, because I had a massive thing for Twin Peaks, and when I found out they were going back there, um, I was just like, really? Then it became such a, it took such a long time for my first because David Lynch just did a tweet once saying the owls are out or, or something like that, and everyone just went, what the fuck? And everything blew up, and the writer, um, I can't remember his name now. Mark, Mark um, Frost? Yes, Frost. Um, uh, he did also a tweet so they're both like everyone's like oh my god then I kind of forgot about it and then it was just kind of hard to get hold of because it was on stars or something like that it was on a, something I didn't have and I didn't download yeah. them so I just kind of didn't watch them then I got them for this is I'm on about the season 3 one I got them DVD maybe not last year year before I just binged them and it's like oh my god this stuff's amazing yeah it really was great performances um Great sound design, incredible visuals, terrifying at times. And uh, Lynch does uh, all his sound design. Yeah. I love the, the fact he's listed in the credits, sound design, David Lynch. It's yeah, like, okay, cool. Nice no, one, man. Yeah, he, well, he's a musician himself. so. It's not... In fact, um, it's very different to the other seasons in that most episodes end with a really haunting song in that club. Mm. Um, but just as the credits go in over the, the band on stage, you know, whether it's Moby at one point or Nine Inch Nails or yeah, yeah, yeah. people you've never heard of, it's like, this is fucking brilliant. Yeah, so that was why I watched Sharks Puss vs. Werewolf because my brain was frazzled after two and a half weeks of Twin Peaks. So it's just like, as soon as you and Sarah said, Darren, you should watch this, I said, all right, I fucking will. I'm glad. And it reset my brain you. for me. <laughs> Brilliant. Is there anything of um, merit that you wanted to mention that you've watched? I've watched a couple of things, but uh, not worth talking about, really. Okay. That's a shame. I watched um, a Christopher Smith movie. We've covered Christopher Smith once for an, an episode, didn't we? Well, he just released a new movie, and I didn't get to see it, unfortunately. It was at the Fright Fest or non Fright Fest, which was at Halloween. Um, they mm. premiered his new film, and I really wanted to see it, but I can't remember what it's about. But I do like his films. Did you watch Triangle? <laughs> Uh, no, I watched <laughs> Get Santa with Jim Broadbent I've as Santa Claus. not seen this, and I didn't even know Chris Smith had made a, a Christmas horror movie. Well, neither did I. I knew I this movie had popped up a couple... Of, <laughs> it was actually really good. Me and I Alice like Jim watched it. We watched, uh, we watched it with mince pies, and it got a bit Christmassy a bit early, and we watched it with mince pies and sort of Stalin cake. And Yeah, it's got Rafe Spool in it as well. It's got Super Hans from um, uh, Peep Show, and it's kind of like... It's kind of like that movie with Kurt Russell, The Christmas Chronicles. I've so you, you, Jim Broadbent is like a bad... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim Broadbent is a bit of a badass Santa Claus in it. He gets put in prison because they all think he's a nutter. And um, Rave Spools tries to break him out with his son. And it's just really heartwarming Christmas fun. And, and I thought, I kept thinking, I can't believe this is Christopher Smith that's directed this. That's mental. He's done a great job. 
and I really would recommend it, even though it's not horror. It's a Christmas movie, but go watch it. Came out in 2014. It's a bit older now, but it's a good, good movie. I, I might try and persuade Sarah, but she's not a Christmassy person. That's a shame. She's a Halloweeny person. That's brilliant. Um, all right. Do you want to uh, do this? I do. Uh, can I mention one more thing? No. Okay. Let's get into this then. No, I'm going to mention it. Yeah, oh, God. Go on. Uh, I also watched something which made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me reminisce on the good old days. And I watched the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion show. Yeah, what is all this? I don't know what this is. So it's an hour and a half long. It's um, Will Smith. Phil passed though, didn't he? Yeah, so Will Smith gets the cast together um, and they they reminisce about their auditions, about the meaning of the show, the um, the way it's still relevant to this day, you know, around the racial and social stuff in it. Uh, they laugh, they cry, they bring up James Avery and they do a bit of a tribute to him and everyone's crying their eyes out. It's so, so sad. Then they bring in boom 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 the original Aunt Viv who got fired famously after the second season uh, and hasn't spoken to Will Smith for 27 years and uh, they bring her in and they basically make it up to make up you know for their, for their argument on all the lost years in front of everybody everybody hugs everybody cries and they even bring in Nikki that played the little boy Nikki in it um, and it was just such a great piece of television I was bawling my eyes out by the end of it it was just like this is the best thing I've ever seen uh, it came out on HBO Max probably about a week ago so I'd highly recommend if you haven't already seen it guys and you're a fan of the Fresh Prince watch the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion show it's about an hour and a half long and it's some of the best reality TV I've ever seen. Amazing. Well, there we go. Oh, I might watch it. Uh, I didn't mind Fresh Prince back in the day. Haven't seen it for quite a while. But um, it's, it's an enjoyable show and it's Will Smith, you know. I mean, I've rewatched it all recently because it's on um, Netflix. Mm. Uh, uh, all six seasons. So I probably finished it about a year ago. But I was watching one or two episodes every morning with my breakfast and a coffee. Um, really sitting for it still chuckling at you know some of the jokes some of the hip hop the fashion sense is amazing in it and the ga- the cameos they have you know like Michael Jordan will pop up or uh, someone from Public Enemy or you know I don't know they'll mention they'll mention a 90s rapper and I'm like yeah brilliant it's really cool I love that show in that case then I'll speak something I just binged past a couple of weeks because I just I just started somehow I just fell into watching it again I've seen it a couple of times which is not horror related but it's a TV program that it crowd or the it crowd oh yeah have yeah you, yeah have you seen it yeah i do i'm a big fan of that and i fell into it late uh, i only discovered it a few years ago really mm. everyone telling me it's the same thing gav same with you when someone tells me you'll love this dan you okay, should watch yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay fuck off i I'll don't want to watch it i'll watch it when i get to it yeah yeah so i got to it and i was not disappointed it's very funny uh, i watched i rewatched it and just it's just the genius just that they're, they're so cast so perfectly it's best casting really is yeah you know, it's definitely uh, it's definitely one of the funniest and i say new but it's not that new anymore is it not it's... really it's five seasons as well it didn't do the whole british two season thing which they like to do you know yeah um, no it's good the it crowd and i'm surprised really it hasn't been remade for uh, america they are quite often when something's successful i'm kind of glad that it's just it is what it is ne- i've never seen the american office i so couldn't tell you actually so. um well it's quite funny actually um, I, I just don't like the main guy the dude is a 40 year old virgin yeah steve Carell. i can't stand that guy no offense that's no offense if you're listening they- steve they did do an American version. Um, oh, okay. They did, they, they did one episode and oh, it flopped so bad they never made it. They never oh, made I it into a full show. I wonder why. I'll have to maybe watch that one episode. And weirdly, uh, it looks like Richard Adiola was in it as well. Oh, that's not good. But over an American audience. Oh, no. That was... Yeah. He, he did, what... though. He did uh, the watch, though, didn't he? The one about the aliens coming down, the neighborhood watch. Yeah, uh, and he was like, yeah. the funniest thing in that movie, and he didn't even say much. Yeah, that was a weird film because I really wanted to like it, and it should have been funny. And for some reason, they maybe too many funnies make unfunny or something. That is a famous saying that I definitely agree with. Too many funnies make unfunny. Yeah, that's from get the Gav World of Gav. World of the Gav. World of Brilliant. Gav. Should we get into this episode? <laughs> let's let's go off and play with our good guys and We've got be friends to the end six year old oh my god it's brilliant i can't wait to talk about this let's do it
Everyone has a birthday they'll always remember. Can we open my presents now, Mommy? A good guy! I knew it! <laughs> Hi, I'm Chucky. He's something, isn't he? This is Andy's. Time for bed, Andy. Good night, baby. Good night, Aunt Maggie. Good night, Chucky. Everyone knows most accidents happen at home. How did that happen? This is no accident. Andy! I'm Detective Mike Norris. Homicide. Andy! Miss Peterson's dead, Miss Barclays. She fell from the kitchen window. Someone's moved in with the Barclay family. And so has terror. Mommy, I know who was on the counter. Andy! Andy. Who, Andy? Chucky. Nobody believes you about Chucky. Ah! He came alive in my hand. I, I, I... Oh, for God's sake. Why won't you believe me? Because I'm sane, Mrs. Barkley. Sane and rational. No one believes the truth. Ah! Or lives to tell it. There's nothing nice about murder. And there's nothing innocent about child's play. And here we go. So child's play from 1988. A single mother gives her son a much sought after doll for his birthday, only to discover that it is possessed by the soul of a serial killer. <laughs> Good movie. Ticks a lot of boxes for me. Um, we'll get into it in a bit more detail in a moment, but it spawned, obviously, a new horror icon. Um, Chucky's definitely a recognisable horror icon, really, isn't he now? Last year. Uh, no, no, not last year. A couple of years ago when I went to... Universal Nights of Horror. Um, in the evening, you can do like in the same as the daytime. They've got a bus which goes round. In the daytime, it goes round the back of the lots. You see like um, Alfred Hitchcock's office that he worked in. And you, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You go through the parking lot and everything. People are just working, and you're on like a little tram system going around it. In the evenings, they do it as well, but it's a horror themed one. And the and in the daytime, you have a TV on each tram. But kind of like you imagine like if it was in Jurassic park or something on a yeah. little video screen yeah. saying and over here we've got you know, in this an actor from the movie in the evening it's chucky oh brilliant well that's how cool is that you know he's going hey welcome to the ride fuckers yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's just like <laughs> yeah i know we got over here and uh, watch out for the and it's cool you know well, that's really cool. Yeah, so Chucky's definitely become a bit of a horror icon, um, and and I do really love, in especially in the first few movies, he is such a unique and very potty mouthed character as yeah. well. Yeah, he, like. he almost. It's a, it's funny. You always get the same. Like uh, Freddy didn't become skittish and funnyish until maybe part three. He was getting there, you know, um, and. The same with Chucky, he didn't on the first one. He's pretty deadpan, but the second one, he's already sort of going there a little bit. And it's so funny that they go this way, isn't it? But where, where, where Freddy, uh, no, sorry, Michael and uh, Jason, Jason does a bit, but he doesn't speak. It, I guess it's the lines it as well. For Jason. When it's killing, when they say a one liner. As well. well, it works for Jason because we both agree that part six is one of our favourites, and that's where it got really funny. Think, yeah, uh, think because Jason's silent, he's like a mime comedian almost. Yeah. Um, I think it works for Chucky because, like Freddie, um, it works because Robert Engdom is great at delivering those lines, and Brad Dourif is amazing at delivering those lines. And there's something hilarious and something funny about seeing a doll, a little red headed doll tell a child to fuck off or i'm gonna cut your fucking heart out or it's just hilarious to see this little doll doing this it's brilliant and it's a really cool juxtaposition to see that doll with a sweet little face saying all those horrible things and it's, it's good it's really good uh, that you have brad to uh, do the do the chucky voice because his voice is so good it's so quite unique voice as well it's he's got he does those phrases well and he brings that cheekiness out in it as well yeah, and he can, but he can also be, he can also actually be quite scary as well. Oh, absolutely. 
Um, it's directed by Tom Holland, but not Tom Holland, who is playing Spider-Man in the Marvel movies. This is the OG Tom Holland, the director. <laughs> of Friday Night. Uh, yes, of Friday Night, indeed. Um, Which and... also starred a... Uh, Steve, I was going to say Susan Sarandon then, but what it wasn't Susan, Susan Sarandon. Sarandon. Uh, <laughs> Chris Sarandon, yeah. <laughs> Who was uh, obviously the Z vampire, Peter Dandridge, yeah. in an um, old uh, motherfucker. Friday night. Friday night. And of course, Tom Holland also directed something we've covered, Psycho 2. Uh, he also directed The Stand, the. Um, Jerry TV Dandridge. Show. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Peter. Uh, it's um, Tom Holland's awesome. I do love Tom Holland, and also written by Don Mancini, who mm. really, really loved this franchise to the point that he's actually written every single entry in the franchise and ended up directing. A, did this become a TV show? It's in the works. He's actually directing some of the episodes that's, of the TV show. That's Don what Mancini. I thought. He's really become on like that far involved in it. And it's really nice when you've got a presence which comes back to a franchise. Uh, or, or of a recurring curse with this with Brad DeRiff or is a TV show going to be Brad DeRiff um, there's not much information on it at the moment right but it's it really nice when you have repeating 2021 that's what it says it's nice when you have repeating similarities from the original it just helps you just like when you start with these movies with uh, the score being the same as the first one it just helps you get back into that world and you can't change Chucky's voice they did the remake obviously yeah, they did, and we can talk about that. I mean, obviously, it was um, Mark Hamill, and he's got a great voice for, you know, he does the Joker in the Batman cartoon, and I wasn't. Really I think he's got it. a fantastic voice. I wasn't into the movie, the uh, new one. No, it was a different direction. It didn't need to be called Child's Play. They could have done a different doll. Or they could have done uh, My Alexa to takes over my um, house. They could have done anything like that, but. They instead tied it into child's play. That's fine. That's because I there's an audience enjoyed. already there. So to try and get the financing for that, it's easier to get the financing when you say the audience is already there. We're just going to do that. And some of those people will definitely come over. Statistics tell, tell us they will. And they would have been right. We would have yeah. watched the movie. We would have paid out to see the film, some of us horror fans, and then been happy with it or disappointed with it on whatever opinion you have of the film. This yeah, is a good I'm film, a fan though. of that remake. I think cool. it's all right. Like I say, up to you. Whatever floats your boat, man. But it doesn't compare to these original movies. Um, no. And what's cool as well is, like you said, Brad Dourif has been involved every step of the way in every movie. You can't really... It's like have it doing Freddy without Robert Englund. It doesn't work. Well, you've got the sound department. Um, it's the same. You've got the same composing, the same sort of narrate, uh, uh, voice of Chucky. So it's quite nice. Audibly, it's all very the same, isn't it? All these movies. And even Andy Barkley, the, the kid from the first two movies, is played by Alex Vincent, and he even comes back in a couple of the later, um, more recent films as well. Oh, those are. Um, yeah, so he's in like the last two Charles Play movies as well. Cult I don't, I don't and really, Curse. I don't remember this series that much. Curse, I kind of enjoyed. I remember that being kind of like in one location on a rainy night. So that's that's my jam. That's my bag. Yeah, cool. Hmm. Yeah, well, that that's closely followed by Cult. Um, which is several Chucky dolls, and they're all voiced by Brad Dourif, trying to break Alex Vincent out of a mental home, trying to break Andy Barkley out of a mental home. And it, it's really good fun. Um, Chucky gets really violent, and it's really bloody and brutal. It's quite and incredible that... how Chucky's managed to come back. Uh, like, just watching these two movies, like, well, how's he going to come back from that? But that second one, they're like, oh, they're just remaking him again. Okay. I mean, I even love it when they bring Tiffany in. I think she's a great character in, in uh, Bride of Chucky, um, voiced by uh, Jennifer Tilly. She's got a great voice for that as Titty. well. <laughs> Tilly, Titty. <laughs> um, the only movie in the series I don't like that much out of all of them is uh, The Seed, with, where they have the weird little baby. Mm -hmm. Um not a fan of that one, but all the others I'm like, a big fan of. Oh, yeah, no, that was weird. That's that one with that weird kid. It? Yeah, like, that's odd. That's kind of yeah. that, that's taking the movie to like uh, going into your Jurassic, 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 Jurassic Park movies, isn't it? And it's got Red Man in it as Red Man. Exactly. There you go. Um, it's like having it, bloody uh, method, Matt. No, who? who, who ooh, Buster Rhymes in it. Halloween. Yeah, at least he didn't play Buster Rhymes. I said we should do commentary for that, didn't I? 
You did. But we, if we I did think that, we should. We, I think we should. We'd have to do that one wearing Michael Myers masks so you can understand us properly, like you can't understand Buster Rhymes properly. <laughs> That'd be quite good fun. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like Kenny from South Park in a rating over a film. People aren't going to want to hear that. They aren't going to want to hear that. Well, let's get into this. So this is 1988. This was, um, you know, the first time we'd seen anything like this. Special effects, we should probably mention. You touched on this in the intro. Jay was into these, and I'm into these. All practical, um, really, especially in the second one, but in this one even. Um, Chucky looks great. It's all puppeteering, state-of-the-art hydraulics and, you know, all that kind of stuff that Jim Henson would have been very up on as well. And little fact for you, Gav, you might already know this, but um, did you know that the Crypt Keeper's eyes are actually Chucky's eyes? They reuse them for the Crypt Keeper. Sweet. No, I did not. So when you watch Tales from the Crypt, have a look at the Crypt Keeper. He's got, you'll notice now, he's got exactly the same eyes as Chucky, big bright blue eyes Mm -hmm. staring at you, but obviously they're in a skull, whereas in this they're in a little red-headed good guy doll. Yes. Obviously a cash-in on the old um, sort of the Cabbage Patch Kids, isn't it, really, um, this one? Brad Dourif's hair. Yeah, what, what do you want to say about it? It's special. Well, the movie, let's get into it. So the movie starts off like a bit of a sort of detective movie, doesn't it, really? You it's know, got, you start off with this... It's a thriller chase type bit, isn't it? Yeah, you don't really know what's going on. I mean, if you flicked over... 10 o'clock at night and caught the beginning and you think oh this looks like some kind of gritty late 80s uh, you know thriller like detective and yeah. just, it does certainly start that way um brad de being hunted by detective mike norris played by the suave chris sarandon yep not a vampire in this one and uh what if he was what if he'd been an actually a vampire in this as a detective vampire detective be like wolf cop but vamp dick vamp dick Oh my god! Dick Did vamp. you just say vamp dick? Dick vamp. Yeah. Dick what, mass. what if that was going on? There's a bit of vamp dick. Oh yeah, I did watch that Dick Mass movie. That was really good. Prey. It's on Amazon Prime now. It's set in Amsterdam. It's a big lion in Amsterdam. It's fucking pretty good. I want to check that out. It's decent. It's 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 the lion looks all right. It's it's the the, the dubbing over the top is really like uh, like just really like out of place. It doesn't really sound right. And it's a shame. I would have happily watched the subtitles. But yeah, it's a really decent movie. Anyway, what if it was a vamp, vamp <laughs> detective? Well, I think that would have been brilliant. And if Charles Lee Ray became yeah, the, a... The, the, the perp would be running off and you'd just be like, uh, no worries. All of a sudden you're at the end and he runs into you. <laughs> and then you turn around and start running back and you, hey, I'm here again. And be like, oh, just wear them you'd out. Go in, you'd go into the department store and you'd say, the sign said open, so I'm always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy some new sweaters. I was hoping Chris's sweaters Don't. were going to be uh, wardrobed in this as well, but they weren't as good. He's he's good in this, isn't he, Chris Vanden? Yeah, yeah, I like the fact that like you know he obviously does the realistic thing. What? Yeah, you know, yeah there's a doll. A doll's done it. Yeah, well, obviously a fucking doll hasn't done it, but he. he kind of comes through I love the fact that he never actually when there's that should be a reveal in it where he lets the woman know I believe you now and your child should be innocent he doesn't actually do this she just seems seems to somehow know almost like there's a scene cut before it did you notice that when he finds out he doesn't actually say to her oh my god did you see what just fucking happened to me fuck me a little fucking doll came fucking after it's because me. You know, he's a no nonsense cop and he just wants to cut straight facts, to the chase it's the facts yeah just the facts fucking dragging it <laughs> so um mike norris that's his name detective mike norris so he he's having a bit of a shootout with charles lee ray and charles lee ray has got an accomplice and charles lee ray is called the lakeshore strangler as I well i you could do a pre child's play and it'd be almost like the joker movie or something and it's totally yeah, about this dude watch that. and it actually chucky's doll isn't even in it there might be an advert on tv and that's it but it's a movie about charles lee ray that'd be fucking good well, he, he's he been chased, he gets shot in the leg, and he knows he's bleeding out, Charles Lee Ray. So he heads into a department store, and he's walking around saying, I've got to find somebody. i got to find somebody. And you realise it doesn't mean somebody, he means some body. Because what he wants to do, he's studied voodoo magic, yeah. and he wants to 
transfer his soul into somebody else. Yeah, he's found this stuff out from his dude called Dr. Death, which we'll get to later on. But so, what's he actually know then? What has he actually done, this killer? What do we know? We don't know much. Can we try and build a like a, a, a base, a case for him as such? I mean, he's pretty psychotic. We know that he's murdered lots of women by strangling them. Oh, okay. Um, Was that his MO? That, that's why he's called the Lakeshore Strangler. Okay. And okay. He's was wanted it, was by the he police. Like sexually motivated as well, or well, he's got a bloke that helps him do it. So I don't really know. I think he's just a really yeah, deviant kind of guy. Henry Lee Lucas. But then, then, on top of that, not only is he a murderer, he also has studied voodoo witchcraft. Yeah, I know. Um, it's taking taking so... the whole serial killer thing to another extreme. The fact that you've got fucking powers, you've got powers. Yeah. That's pretty. You can make thunder and shit come about in the sky. It's pretty not, cool. Not many serial killers do that. There should be a movie about that guy and finding the powers. Power of Grayskull. I know. I was thinking of He-Man when I said that. <laughs> because He-Man can make thunder and lightning come out of the sky as well. Yeah. 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 Um, so he's bleeding out in the toy shop. And the only thing he can find is there's hundreds of these good guy dolls everywhere. And he knocks one over and he says, this will have to do. And he says some voodoo chanting give me the power i beg of you give me the power and then like you said gav thunder and lightning happens um the toy shop explodes everyone assumes it's been struck by lightning um and mike crawls out the cop mike crawls out of the the debris and he's just about alive but he finds charles lee ray's body and uh he's dead he's done yeah we get a little close up the camera just pans over to a doll's face mm -hmm. as the lightning strikes and that's all we get to see of the intro and that's your intro right there yeah Oof. it's 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 i don't know why it exploded but the, the sh shop exploded surely that's not a good idea because if you had gone and done this magical thing like if you'd gone into the body if it had been a human you'd gone into the body and then it exploded what was the point of going into the body if you're just going to explode well, I, th I think that was just for a dramatic effect, really, wasn't it? I guess it was for us audience members, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, suddenly we cut to a little boy called Andy. What? Uh, and uh, uh, this beginning bit, I was like, "You little fucker! What the fuck are you doing with that? Are, is, uh, can you not just... But what the fuck's going on with the milk? It's just making such a so, mess. I've been so pissed. Gavin's off. describing Andy is decided to make his mum because it's his birthday. He wants to get his mum out of bed. So he makes his mum one mess. of the most disgusting breakfasts I've ever seen. Now, he's only six, uh, but he does make yeah, I've got Cheerios a, with I've a got ton a of sugar. <laughs> but the thing is, though, Elijah would, I don't know, the milk, at the moment, the milk, bottled milk in the fridge is like pretty hefty. That he, he would definitely get that everywhere. He, I'm sure he'd probably get the syrup. Oh, I don't know, actually. I think they're on par, actually. What about the butter? He just puts a massive chunk of butter uh, onto some undercooked toast. I think I think Elijah could do that. I think <laughs> I might have to say to him. I might have to film it for, for a Facebook group or something. Sort of say to him like, right, can you do this for me? Let's do a replay of Charles' play. Well, well, he's making this for his mum. While he's making this for it's his mum to get sweet. around there, it is really sweet, it and is. he's a really good little act, child actor, in my opinion. Little fun. Um, he does really, he does really good crying later on, and he, he's genuinely a good actor for a child his age. So anyway, he's he's trying to get his mum out of bed because it's his birthday. While he's making this, he sees the cartoon for the good guys on TV, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I've already seen this one." And then he sees the commercial for the toy, and he kind of really wants the toy. He looks over and he sees a box about the size of a a good guy box, and he thinks that's wrapped up. That could be what I'm getting for my birthday. This is brilliant. Jay goes to me. Is he making his mum breakfast on his birthday? And I, yeah, she's like looking at me really puzzled. I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's. I think it comes from not material objects, motor, like as your main goal, Jay. You know, I think <laughs> it's about being nice <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's not just about the present, right? <laughs> um, He's like, mummy, mummy, get up. It's very sweet. He must really love his mum, and straight away uh, ponders the question, where's the father? Yeah, no, we don't really get to explore that too much, which is fine. We don't need to. We just know that yeah, she's a single mum. It's interesting. It doesn't really go into it, and you could have gone into it, but maybe that maybe they probably did have it in the script, and it's probably cut down for time purposes because there's quite a lot to get in there for this film. 
Because really, there's only actually about four main actors in this whole movie. We get a few side characters yeah, pop up here. Yeah, a single there, location but... in the apartment block, you know. Yeah, and it's a great apartment block as well. So he gets her out of bed. And what I do like is all the way through this movie, you get little snippets, either a good guy commercial on the television or news reports about the Lakeshore Strangler. And we do hear that the Lakeshore Strangler's been killed in an explosion. Um, so, you know, you get these little snippets of what's going on in the real world, all, all while Stanley is trying to celebrate his sixth birthday, bless him. Um, his mum says to him, do you want to get your presents then? Go on, go and open that big one. And he's thinking, this is brilliant. I've got a good guy doll. This is going to be fantastic. He opens it up. And it's just a box full of second-hand clothes. And that's heartbreaking to a six-year-old boy, isn't it? It is. It, and we find out that mum doesn't have much money. Yeah. I mean, then, it's just, it's that's just great. them it's... two, which is fair enough. And it is one of those things, I guess, when you like, you don't have enough money to get... You know your kid wants a toy, but you don't have enough money to do it so you can only get clothes. I'd like to think, though, even if you didn't have enough money to uh, get toy, you could still pick up something second-hand cheap at some sort of thrift store. Do you know what I mean? I still think yeah. you, get, you could get... Because you know your kid's going to fucking want... At six, going to want a toy. Even if it's just a blank bit of paper and the new pencils. They'll well, be happy. It, it... It's good storytelling because it, obviously we, it's for the story. We know that the story, poor. yeah, because obviously it's such disappointment because yeah, he wants the fucks wants that. Then to get the Chucky dolls, like, but oh, it does I'm gonna get, love it. Yeah. Well, he does get a set of good guy to- uh, tools like a saw and a screwdriver and a hammer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But he says, he says, but the thing is, mum, I kind of need the the guy to go with it. He's a bit cheeky, but he's only been a six year old. You know, he really wants that toy. Yeah. Can, you know, Furbies, whatever it is that's out at the moment, kids, they want that thing that's the biggest selling thing, you know? And this is this is what it is in this in this movie. It's the good guy doll. Um, so his mum goes off to work, and while she's at work, she works in a department store, and she's got an asshole for a boss. He's a, he's a four-eyed cunt. He's a prick, isn't he? And her friend, um, come, D- Dinah, says to her, oh, there's a guy in the alleyway selling... Uh, Good guy dolls, which sounds very dodgy. It sounds really. There's a there's a high, uh, like a homeless dude out the back selling um kids toys. toys. <laughs> like what? Yeah, but very realist. Very like yeah, absolutely. Furbies, you know, people will probably do all that yeah. shit. Well, you no, know? if you find it off the back of a lorry, in it, like, you know, or, or there's a car open and you go go by and you just take it out, stay there, you're just gonna sell it. You know, you do what you can. So she goes out to this hobo and she says, I'm not oh, saying, st- I'm not, just quickly, yeah, I'm not saying stealing's acceptable. <laughs> just, you're just, saying, I'm just putting that across. I'm just saying you, the people do what they can or have to in certain situations. So if you're selling to a, from, if you're buying from a hobo in an alleyway, Gav isn't judging you. I am not. You can buy, you can do anything you like with a hobo in an alleyway. And I quite often do. Now, um, she goes up to this, hobo and she says okay i hear you've got a good guy doll and he's like i think he says like a hundred bucks and she's like no i haven't got that and her friend says no she'll give you ten dollars and he's like no 60 and in the end karen's like look i'll give it i think she gives him about 40 or 50 bucks for the doll um and she's really pleased she's got the doll for andy andy's going to be over the moon so that's pretty cool but she does get another telling off from her boss when she goes back in, he's like, you shouldn't be doing these things. You get 10 minute breaks to do these kinds of things on. And then she's, and he's just like, you're going to have to work this evening. And she's like, yeah, but oh no, I can't. It's my kid's birthday. I don't care. You can't. It's like, I see this, this, this angered me slightly, but at the same time is I, the situation she is in desperate. She has to get every penny she gets. If she misses a payment yeah. or anything, she's stuck. So she can't fuck up where I, I would be kind of be like, you can fuck off. It's my kid's birthday, but you can't go to the possibility of losing the job. So I guess you can't say that. But it did anger me. But it's very weird. It's, it's very good stuff. It's good. And that, but Maggie does say, you know, I'll, I'll work her shift, and the boss is like, no, because no, you're right. from a different department yeah. in the store. And she says, I'll babysit then. So that yeah, kind so of Ma- works she's out a good okay. friend. But obviously, this is you know what happens. though is uh, pretty bad. So Andy's really pleased. He's got his good guy doll. He's over the moon. He's very happy. I'm your friend. He turns it on. Turns it on, and he's and instantly it says, "Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play?" And that's that whole voice that we've seen on the adverts. Hi, I'm Tommy. I am Johnny, or whatever the name is. And then he says the phrase, "Why didn't we I'll start, be your friend to the end?" Why didn't we start the stuff. podcast on that? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chucky Steele. Wanna play? Oh, uh, hi, I'm Gav. 
<laughs> I'll be your friend to the end, Gav. Yep. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so he's really happy, and he's literally this. You can tell this is going to be something he takes with him everywhere. He drags it around. He sits it next to him. He sleeps in the bed with it. He's excited. He's got his. He's basically a lonely kid, man, with no friends. He doesn't even see his mum that often. He hasn't got work any friends. Because he makes a fucking mess wherever he goes. He's brushing his teeth. He makes a big fucking mess again. What is he doing with that? Why would you hate this child? I don't hate him. He just makes a big fucking mess. Okay. <laughs> Well, Maggie puts Andy and Chucky to bed and she says, come on, turn the TV off. You're not going to watch the news. I want you to bed. And while he's making a big mess and brushing his teeth, she moves Chucky uh, because the TV just comes on, strangely, because Chucky wants to read the, hear the news about the Lakeshore Strangler. So she thinks, oh, for God's sake. So she moves the the doll back into the other room and she says, why did you do that? He's like, why did I do what, Aunt Maggie? Why did you turn the TV on? Why did you move the door? And he's like, I didn't do any of that. Uh, it's Chucky. Chucky wanted to watch the news. And he told me he wanted to watch the news. As a kid and still in this now, because uh, I watched this when I was very young, um, I was just um, so upset that the kid couldn't get his point across. You yeah. Know, I'm just like, oh, but he's done it the truth. And I still have it now with him. Chucky, Chucky just keeps moving around and Maggie's getting more and more spooked um, to the point that there's a chair that's been moved, there's flour it's good though, that's isn't been it? spilled. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it, really it, good. Like it, You can imagine nowadays it being like a James Wan movie or something like that sort of set up. But it, it's done quite nice. It's not done too spookily. It's done kind of just... Because the thing is, we know it's not a ghost or anything. We know what it is. We know it's Chucky. We haven't seen Chucky move yet. Um, so it's a build-up of it, doing all these little things, showing footprints in the the flower on the worktop. But um, it's good. It's really, That's really it's cool, good, isn't it? It's really good. Karen calls to check that Maggie's doing okay with uh, Andy, and she's like, you know, I won't be here much too too much longer. I'll be coming home from work soon. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. And whilst that's happening, a hammer is picked up by a little hand, and we have Chucky's POV. I love Chucky's point yep. of view. It's just like a little thing, just da, 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 and he's got a hammer, and um, he's just creeping around on place, and he kind of feels for this woman. He's like, "Is a little toy hammer's gonna somehow hurt you?" I don't know what Chucky's thinking. He's like, he just picked up that, like, yeah, that'd do. I don't know how that was gonna do, but what well, he smashes her in the face, and she goes flying out the kitchen window, down about four stories, so splat on the pavement. Yeah, into a car. It's like a Rosemary's Baby death, isn't it? Was it's it like that woman on Rosemary Baby. Um, I think it was in the car. car. Yeah. just landed on a car. Yeah, yeah, no, it is a car. You're right. Bang. Poor so kid. it's kind of uh, this, this Karen. Kid. I can know. That'd have been a bit. Well, Karen gets home, doesn't she? She's like, where, "What's going on? Where's my son?" Oh, I well, love this. All the, that's I all guess the cops are in there. Andy's house. asleep, isn't he? I guess Andy's gone to sleep. Yeah. And Chucky would have probably got back into bed with him. And he'd probably said to Chucky, I told you you'll get told off about... Look, he does. You're told off about the news. But he's probably like, where have you been getting it? For for him, he's just going along with his little doll, just doing all this stuff and talking to him. Because he's six. He doesn't have any better. I, you know what? I'm going to give little man, Elijah, a bit of benefit of doubt here. He would definitely come up to me and say to me, that doll is creepy as fuck and it's talking to me. He wouldn't say fuck. Probably say creepy as shit. But uh, uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely would say me that, I think. I don't think he'd just go along with it. He'd be like, nah. So I reckon Andy might be slightly on the spectrum here a little bit. Or and then again... I don't know, it's just he, a kid. He, he, it's, you know what it is, though? It's the death of his father and him wanting to have something there. And this is definitely filling of a slight void. Well, he's completely a little lonely little kid. Yeah. What I love is when Karen gets home um, and there's feel, cops, I feel bad about what I've said a dozen about cops in her. You won't. I feel bad about what I've said about him now. Oh, don't, we, don't worry about it. I love when Karen gets home and her house is just full of cops. Like one of them sat on the newspaper, reading the newspaper on the sofa. <laughs> They're all just like sitting around. And she's like, what's going on? Where's my son? Where's my son? And lo and behold, luckily, Chris Sarandon is there. And he's like, oh, hello. Um, your son's here. And she's like, oh, is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. But I need to speak to you about an accident. And he explains that Maggie, you know, went out the window and is dead. Um, and they found footprints in the flower, little kiddie footprints. And she's saying, what are you saying? He's like, I don't know. 
I don't yeah. know what I'm telling you. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying, you know, it's a obviously it's a bit bit odd. But to be honest, I feel thought of it like what if I just, he had just picked up Chucky doll, put him on the top and just did that and said, Hey auntie, look at uh, you know, or whatever you know. Yeah, it could have been that, couldn't it? Look look at the feet and they've done it themselves, you know. Well, they go and speak to Andy and Andy says I've been talking to Chucky and his real he's told me that his real name is Charles Lee Ray. And he's told me that he was sent from heaven by Daddy to look after me. And so this is how he's that's manipulating. That's a little bit heartbreaking. Andy. Yeah, this is this is like a predator, or just someone who manipulates people for a living. Yeah. But then he says, but then he says, and he also said Aunt Maggie was a real bitch who got what she deserved. Yeah, and to the Whoa. mum, see, the, the movie, this is movie has so many layers to it because you've got the whole side, If you, you, there's that side which is the main focus, but, but you kind of miss, it's almost like a, the silent, silent thing going on in the room, but it's the emotions the mum must be going through, having your child go through this. Because I could watch this from both perspectives now, and just having your child go through that um, is would destroy you. Just like when he starts doing it, saying, "Oh God, please, what what's wrong with you?" Not thinking it's because his dad died, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It'd be heartbreaking to you. It, you'd be like, "I want to help, but I can't help." And you'd feel tied to, you know. It'd be horrible. Yeah, and, and that doesn't even step into that world that much, you know. Yeah, I mean, she's wondering, is he mentally unwell? And that comes into it a bit later on. Because we don't focus on her. We don't sit here with her drinking herself to death because she's an alcoholic or something like that in the evenings. We don't see those shots. We don't see that side. But uh, it's interesting because you could go down that road. You don't need to. Again, it could be a time thing. Um, But it's interesting. It's a good movie. Well, Chris Arandon does feel a bit sorry uh, for her and Andy. So he gets all the cops to clear out and they sort of tidy up and sort of, you know leave her to grieve because she's just lost her best friend you know and, and it's a pretty sad time so he does and he's like Look, here's my card you know and he still suspects something he still thinks something doesn't feel right and that's because he's a really good cop but that's that really so the next morning we get more manipulation from from chucky now because andy goes off to school on his own on a train which just is a bit odd very quickly he does find the toy hammer and gives it to his assistant or his deputy oh, or whatever yeah. and says to him like can you bag this and get down to uh, anal- analyst analytics or wherever it's gonna go and uh he's like um analytics that's it no ballistics no that'd be for that'd be for guns dna it's not dna it well no i suppose it is dna isn't it anyway forensics forensics that's the motherfucker See, we, we'd just be a detective trying to figure out what, what, well, which, which department, department is it? Gav? What department? I don't know, man. Where what do department? you want it to go? Let's work out which department it is. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Um, what's the ballistics. first letter? What's the first letter? Come on, we could do this, man. What's the first letter? We'd be the worst detectives in the world. We'd Fucking be just shit. eating donuts. Shit, bone and whore. Shit, eating donuts. <laughs> what are we even talking about? Right, so let's go back. So oh, yeah, the next no, morning, he says to him take the hammer down to the testing motherfuckers and he says are you serious and he's like yeah i am and he goes no you're joking he goes no he's like oh okay not thinking this little toy hammer is going to be any sort of fucking murder weapon so it's good you've got like a little murder mystery thing going on and then in the morning andy goes off on his own I, i i presume he goes off to school on his own but he ends up being manipulated by chucky gets on some subways and goes to some gnarly fucking ghettos well, yeah, because Chucky is like, looks like he's whispering something in Andy's ear, and Andy's like laughing, like like you'd see a kid pretend to talk to their dog, but there, yeah, the doll makes him get off into the middle of this like, like harshest projects, little rundown projects. Mm. And uh, what Chucky's done here is he's taken him to Eddie's house. Now Eddie was his partner that kind of betrayed him, and and Dr. escaped Death. on the night, uh, escaped on the night that um, no no Doctor oh, no, Death no, comes no, into that's it. That's the guy. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So Eddie escaped on the night that Charles Lee Ray was killed. So Andy says, you wait here. I'm going to go pee. So he goes off to go pee. And while he's doing that... This little boy just going into some building, a six-year-old, into a building to see what's going for. He doesn't know where he's going to go. He's going to go looking for a toilet, opening up any room. Like, What is he going to find, you know? Whilst he's doing that, we get more POV of Chucky, who heads into Eddie's place. And uh, he starts creeping around. And Eddie's getting freaked out because he... You can hear that somebody's in his house. 
it's in this real slum looking place and chucky turns on the oven and all the gas um and he tricks eddie into like firing his gun well, which obviously... well the kid leaves the building first to where chucky was and he's like where's chucky so the kid's outside chucky? yeah and boom 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 gun goes off eddie's house with eddie inside it completely engulfed in a giant explosion of gas yeah. and chucky is even past the grave so far he's now killed two people yeah. as a doll this yeah. is pretty cool and he's and this little kid doesn't even know what's going on he just thinks it's a big firework <laughs> um and the cut to police station karen comes in the police station she's like what the fuck's going on now i've been told to come to the police station she goes in there and she says to detective Norris, well what's going on why am i in here what's happening and he's like where's your son today and she's like well i assume he's at school and then you see in the background he's being interrogated how about aunt maggie's death how why wasn't he at school then did he just uh, what did what's the score because well, I, this is, I have to I, see my kid who's six to the gates right up to the... At the moment with coronavirus, we still just go to the top gate and just let them go. Um, we used to take them right down into like the school playground. And like there you go, see them to the classroom. You wouldn't just go, all right, you know. Well, I think in 1988, it didn't really matter. You just let your six-year-old get on the train. Yeah, Jimmy Savile was out there just Off entertaining children, wasn't he? So. It, he really was. Yeah. Um so yes, um, Andy's being interrogated. Thanks for that <laughs> by uh, by the cops who are sort of asking him about Aunt Maggie's death. Um, Andy seems very mentally unwell at this point, and he's like, "Chucky told me to do it." And they're like, "Look, Chucky is not real. He's it's so silly. frustrating." So he then he's unleashes the fury. Yeah. yeah, but he then beats up Chucky, doesn't he? He's like, I hate you, Chucky. You lied to me. And he starts punching him. And everyone's looking at this kid like, man, yeah. he needs he needs some help. Yeah. Which, which they do. They say, we're going to take Andy off your hands for two days observation. You go home and get some rest. And we're going to really check him out make sure he's all right. So they do. Yeah. Two days. It's, That's quite intense, quite isn't it? a lot for a little, little, little dude to take in, you know. So Karen goes home with Chucky. She's home alone with Chucky at this point. And how interesting is this, where she's just looking at the box. She's like, no, no, it can't be. And what happens? What falls out of the box? Yeah, she says, say something. Go on, say something if you're real, you little bastard. And she shakes him, and then she laughs at her stupidity. Well, she she wants to. She wants to believe her son. This is quite nice writing and directing here. She wants to believe her son. And for a moment, she yeah, does believe her end. son. That's why she's doing it. And you must. And this is it. You don't have the story of her and her emotions. But I feel sorry for this mum. You know. Well, the, as you say, Gav, she picks up the box to read a bit about that, and some batteries fall out. Some good guy batteries, and it says batteries included. She thinks what? Hmm. So she goes over to the doll and opens up the back of the doll, and there are no batteries in this doll. <gasps> Oh my god that's not something you want to find though i would freak out if that happened um yeah. she drops the doll and it immediately rolls under the sofa and we get this tense moment now of her sort of looking then, under the i sofa. like the way i like the way chucky's playing with his prey oh yeah he rolls under the, then just then open up the, the look under the sofa like the little sofa drapes and be under there and he's just uh, still again so just she just pulls out again going like oh what the fuck? And then she says, uh, talk to me, goddammit. And he says, you stupid bitch, you fucking slut, she, I'll fucking kill you. She goes and over to the fire, screaming. that's why he talks to her, because she threatens to burn him. That's right, she says, I'll throw you on the fire, and if you say something. And he does, boy, does he unleash a lot of Tourette's onto her, doesn't he? He definitely has Tourette's. He screams at her, um, he attacks her, he bites her a bit, um, she drops him, and he runs off, and he runs out off into the lift. Yeah. Um, and he's gone. He's out of the building by the looks of it. Mm. So Karen runs out, but she bumps into Detective Mike. Here he is again. Hello, Detective Mike. Well, he's a vampire. So. <laughs> she says to him, uh, just to let you know that the doll is alive. My son is correct. And, uh, I'm going you know, downtown to find the uh, the peddler who uh, sold it to <laughs> me. 
He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. I, uh, I was literally just going to get get a four pack and go home and chill out and take my shoes off. You know what the fuck? So now I've, don't go down. I, I I really suggest, lady, you don't go downtown. It's pretty bad this yeah. time of night. Don't go down. Uh, uh, okay. Off she goes. He's like, for fuck's sake. To the dodgiest part of town as well. Like and really he has dodgy. To go and it's just like, oh, thanks very much, that. But then again, she's desperate as hell. And well, it's good that he goes though because. He gets some truth. Well, yeah, she almost gets like raped by the homeless guy, doesn't she? Because she goes there and she sort of asks around. Yeah, that 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 conspired or changed in like seconds, didn't it? It's a room, well, like, she whoa. she finds him and he she says, "Oh, you sold me a doll. Um, where did you get it?" And he's like, well, "What have you got?" And she's like, "Um, I've got forty dollars. That's everything I've got." And he's like, "No, no, no, that's not all you've got." And starts grabbing her, and then luckily, Detective Mike shows up throws a few fists around and says I suggest you all get the hell out of here he gets all fisty oh he's great starts fisting all the homeless people oh, oh sorry that's a fisted. different film you're getting fisted boom you're getting fisted brilliant so um, Mike shows up like I said and he basically grabs the homeless guy and says Look, just tell the lady where the doll came from <clears throat> and he says it came from that place that blew up the night the Lakeshore Strangler died. And straight away, he's literally like, whoa. That's... Something in his brain goes, okay, oh, there shit. might be something in this story. Yeah, which is great because I like the fact that all the way through this, though, we get this and we then get another detective coming and witness to Chucky thing as well. But then that's kind of in part two. There's no mention of it. But no. we'll, get, we'll get to that, which is just a bit oh. of a shame, actually. But go on. Yeah. Um, he says to her, you know, must be a coincidence. He almost believes her. You can tell he almost believes her. Um, and he says to her, Charles Lee Ray did threaten to kill Eddie. He did threaten to kill me. Um, and she's like, well, then he's killed Eddie. That He died in that explosion that my son was around. And he's obviously going to come after you now. And Mike's like, uh, I don't know. I might just drop you home, I think. Um, he does drop her home, but... He goes to get a rap sheet, doesn't he? Who's behind him in the in the passenger in the back seat? Well, he goes to the police station, gets a rap sheet, because he's now got a bit of, a bit of interest in this. And, uh, yeah, because Chucky's got nothing to do at the moment, because the kid's body he wants to go into is been taken away, which he's going to get to later. So he's like, well, I'm going after that other fucker that is after me. He's in the and... back of the car. This is one of the most stressful car journeys I've ever seen. <laughs> it starts with Chucky saying, Good night, asshole. I love his delivery of good night, asshole. He starts strangling him, um, puts a plastic bag over his head, but then that doesn't do it So he, because he burns Chucky with his car cigarette lighter. Mm. So then Chucky just starts putting a knife through the seat. And he's all the while, he's driving about 60 miles an hour down the road, trying not to crash. Then the seat, then, then the knife goes up between his legs near his balls. And it's like, gee, how are you not getting your balls cut off by Chucky at this point? He's trying his best to not crash the car. Chucky's laughing, stabbing, suffocating. Chucky's having a great old time because he, he knows that it doesn't matter. So he puts his hand on the accelerator to go faster. But he's like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm a doll. What's going to happen to me? You know? It's quite a good uh, car stunt now, isn't it? Because the car then flips. Yeah, it's not bad. So lands upside down. Um, and it looks like Chucky runs off. And we see Mike's face. And he's definitely... Be- he's like, well, I, I have to believe it now because the little fucker almost just killed me. Mm. Um, but then Chucky comes back and tries to stab Mike. Uh, Mike shoots him. Um, and all while this is going on, Karen's doing her own detective work. <laughs> Andy's mum and she goes off to Charles Lee Ray's old apartment and we've seen this apartment a million times in a million movies you know we go there there's sometimes there's crucifixes all over the walls sometimes there's pages of the bible and here when she goes to visit his apartment there's voodoo spells and stuff everywhere and while she's there Mike shows up and he says what are you, oh, what are you doing here and she's like well I'm investigating you know and this is the point you'd think he'd say to her whoa you should see what's just happened to me. <laughs> I was in a car, it flipped over, and a doll attacked me, put a knife between my me. legs. I managed to do it. I put on the brakes and went flying through. It, the shit's going mad out there. I totally believe you. Your kid's off the chain. Let's go get your kid out, or I, I guess we've got to go after this doll, but I totally believe you. Does he say any of that? No. Does he fuck? No. But he definitely believes her. 
he just doesn't tell her yet because I think the cop in him is still trying to cope with this crazy news, really. I guess. <laughs> um, whilst this is going on, they figure out that he got all of his spells from somebody called John, who's the voodoo guy, Dr. Death. So Chucky actually goes to visit this John guy. And uh, he says to him, he said, like, oh, who are you? And he's like, it's me. It's Charles, Chucky. The spell worked, but it didn't work right. You know, I need, I need, I can't be trapped in this body forever. Um, and he says, I keep getting hurt. Like I got shot and I'm bleeding, but I'm a doll. How can this be? And the voodoo guy is like, well, the problem is you've been in that body for too long and you're turning human. So you need to transfer into an actual human. And this is where um, we get his date line of, I've got a date with a six-year-old boy. Well, first of all, I think, doesn't he want to get into, I thought he would have got into the voodoo guy. I, if it was me, I would have been, I would have transferred my soul into John, the voodoo guy. But that the Ch- Chucky was the, 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 the kid, and he was the first person he told. Surely, was that... oh, of course. No, you're right. So he that's has to. The, he has that's to. The, that's the rule. He has like to. He can only do it. It's like the vampire thing, isn't it? So he can only do it with the first person he revealed to be himself to, which yeah. is Andy. Yeah. That's where he says. Looks like I got a date with a six-year-old boy, which is just the weirdest line. And again, something context. Jimmy Savile would probably say. Definitely would have said. Definitely. Um, Chucky gets a voodoo doll of John and says that uh, you shouldn't show your customers where you keep all your cool stuff. And he breaks his leg and he breaks something else and then he stabs him and he basically almost kills him. Um, and he goes off to go and find his six-year-old boy. John looks like he's about to die. Karen and Mike show up and John is lying there, barely alive. Just enough breath in his body to say... You, you must save the boy. It's Donald Pleasance. I don't know why he sounded like Donald Pleasance. I, sorry, I don't know why I went like that. Can you do it? Can it just be Donald Pleasance anyway? I, li- yeah, I, love Don- it. I like getting you doing Donald Pleasance on most episodes. You must save the boy. Chucky, it's coming after him. I studied him for many years. Charles Lee Ray and Michael Myers. They're oh, the same God. They're the same person. The same... We start. We, st- we literally start a whole new movie. I'd still love to have seen that rumored Chucky versus the Leprechaun. I think that would have been fucking brilliant. You would have thought that was brilliant because Leprechaun had all those funny lines. Chucky had even better lines. Warwick Davis versus a little animatronic doll. I'm pa- I'm paying to see that. Oh, come on, let's have a little fight there. I like a little redhead. Lots of Irish people are redheaded like me as well. Shut the fuck up, you leprechaun shit. And having a little fight, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, no? Uh, no? Uh, come on. Uh, Moving forward, then. Uh, we'll come back to that one, maybe. <laughs> one day. Moving forward, <laughs> Moving forward then. Uh, so, where are we at? John dies. Just after he's told them. Yeah. He's killed him. Chucky, John dies. He's got a voodoo doll and starts just breaking his limbs and shit. We've done this bit. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I put you off. Um, he, he, As he dies, he tells Karen and Mike that his heart is his weakness. Um, and then he just dies. So they're like, shit, we need to go and save Andy. Yeah. Where would Andy be? Save and Andy's the boy. in hospital. Yeah. yeah, Andy's in hospital. But. Chucky goes to the mental hospital and uh, this is great. This is great acting now from a child because he sees out the window, he sees a little glimpse of Chucky and he starts screaming, oh my God, he's going to kill me. Oh, and he's like really crying properly to himself. Mm. And then he starts like, can someone please let me out? Chucky's going to come and kill me. And they're like, shut up, kid. You're fine. No one's coming to kill you. You're an idiot. And he's like, well, he is, he's going to come and kill me. So he, he tries to um, think of a way to get out. Chucky sneaks in, he gets some keys, uh, and he enters Andy's room with a knife. But Andy's not in there, and Andy's very cleverly hidden. I think he hides under the bed. Mm. And Andy's uh, Chucky's looking around, and Andy runs out of the room. So Andy's escaped now, and he manages to escape, run off, and uh, Chucky kills a doctor with one of those, um, what do you call those things that you pump someone's heart with? Those electric shocks of defibrillator. Yes. Defibrillator. Yes. Defibrillator. I just say stuff with fibrillator at the end. 
<laughs> Michael, the refrigerator. So yeah, Chucky kills somebody else. Andy goes home, and Mike and Karen are like, "Where's Where's Andy?" And they're like, "Well, he's not here. He's gone. He's run off." And the doctor's dead, so they're like, "We need to get home. There's only one place he'll be, and that is at home." Chucky gets in the lift, heads up, and uh, a lovely elderly couple get into the lift. And someone says, oh, look, a doll. The old man's like, look, leave it, honey. If, it's, if somebody's lost their doll, they'll come back and get it. And she says, oh, it's an ugly little doll anyway. Fuck and as, you. <laughs> as the lift goes up, you just hear that. Fuck you. <laughs> it's so good. I always think, like, things we say to inanimate objects, if they one day answered back, like when my laptop's running slow or a pen runs out, and I look at it and go, you stupid prick, and I throw it across the room, and it says, yeah, fuck you too. Yeah. <laughs> but it does. He says, fuck you. And that's great. Uh, Andy in the apartment grabs his little good guy baseball bat. And Chucky comes down the fucking chimney. I don't know why he comes down the chimney, Gav. Can you explain? Trying to do a fell of a Christmas homage. Is he's got his way into the building, but then he must have had to gone up on the fucking roof and come down in through the chimney. I don't yeah. get it. No. Also, they're in an apartment block. Are they chimneys? Uh, it'd be it'd be an air vent, wouldn't it? Well, he comes straight down the chimney. It's like the Bruce fire. Then. Chucky does yeah. Bruce. Oh, that, that sounds weird. Welcome to the party, Andy. Oh. Um. Anyway, he comes down, and this is where the special effects look fantastic because we've got great shots of Chucky sort of walking around. Clearly, there's some stuff off, slightly off camera, which we can't see, but it all looks really, really wonderful. He so he grabs the baseball bat and comes up behind Andy and says, better up, Andy. And he smacks the child in the head with the baseball bat, knocks him out, lies down on the floor, and he says, to, he starts chanting, give me the power, I beg of you. Give me the power, I beg of you. And he's trying to transfer his, he says, we're going to play a little game called Hide the Soul. And Andy's like, I don't want to play it. Glad it wasn't a sausage. Jesus Christ. So, hide the soul. He tries to uh, transfer the soul. But Mike and Karen interrupt by breaking the door in. Mike gets his leg sliced by Chucky. um, And he starts hunting around the apartment with a gun. He says to Karen, leave. Get out of here with Andy. But Chucky then knocks out Mike. Karen manages to shoot Chucky. And there's quite a good little ruckus going on here because Mike gets knocked out it's, for a bit. It's a bit like and then Terminator it's... here. The score seems a bit Terminator-y. And the, you got, when you got burnt Chucky crawling along and stuff later on. Yeah, because she throws him on the it's fire, doesn't she? And Andy, Terminator. Yeah. Andy does this amazing bit of the child where um, he says, No, Andy, don't do it. I'm your friend to the end. And Andy just goes, This is the end, friend. And he just lights him up. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, kid, that is a badass line from you there. This is the end, friend. (laughs) You have a little miniature sword, nigga. He is, isn't he? He's brilliant. So he sets him on fire. But, like you said, Gav, that isn't the end because he's all crispy and horrible and looking all sort of disgusted. And and this guy just will not die, will he? Because even after he's burnt, he then gets his head, his leg and his arm, then his head blown off. Hmm. And they're like, well, he must be dead now. And then that random neighbor comes in and he's like, what the hell's going on? I heard loads of gunshots in here. And the cop's like, look, don't touch anything. Don't touch any of that exploded doll. And he's like, what, you mean this? And he brings the head in and he puts the head on the TV and he's like, you mean this guy here? And then the head just starts biting the guy and they have to explode the head. Then the body is still trying to come after the them, even with no The body comes out the air vent like Bruce Willis at this point and just what? drops down on the other detective, which is great for me, for my sensibilities as a kid as well, going, great, we've not just got one, we've got two cops that know this shit's real. So the kid is safe. The kid, oh, the whole time I wanted the kid to be just fucking told, like, given, like, that is the truth, it is the truth, he's alive. Finally gets it, I'm quite happy with that. But what the fuck's going on with this doll uh, where oh, did it come from fight. how did it Loaded. crawl up with one arm how did it crawl up there where did it come Where's from that? chimney it must be like it did earlier i don't fucking know I? but um karen says shoot it in the heart so they do they do and it falls down and it takes its time to die and then the last thing it says is 
I'm Chucky. Wanna play? And we get a freeze frame on Andy. Who's going to who, be fucking traumatised for life. He is 100% spending a long time in a padded room after this. The freeze frame on his face, to me, says two things. Padded room. And the other thing it says is, he knows that this is not the end. He knows that either he's then going to become a serial killer himself or he's never going to be able to sleep properly ever again. Or he's going to commit suicide. Luckily, he comes back for part two. Brilliant. But that is Child's Play. And it really is a, quite a slow burn. It really takes its time but, for but me. It kind of doesn't. It, I see what you're saying it does, but it kind of doesn't. It's only quite a 90-odd minute movie. Um, it's quite comfortable in its storytelling, though. Do you know what I mean? It's like, here is a little bit about the Lakeshore Strangler. Here is a bit about the cop. Um, they do move from A to B quite quickly. It, yeah, yeah, of it's course. It's very know. much the, the school from what Tom Holland's from. He's from classically made films, structured made films. It's a brilliant Strong story. Very told tight. Well. Mm. Very tight screenplay. Mm. It's just, um, it, do, it does what it says, and it does it absolutely fine. It's only a 6.6 .6 on uh, IMDb for this one. And there's no faffing, Gav. As we said, there's no silly... There's no side story about what happened to the dad. No. There's none of this. It's just like, all we need to know is this kid. There's no candy. Boom, mm. boom, 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 boom. And then we, all we want to do is get this doll involved so that this doll can start offing people. The movie is about a demonic doll who is killing people that is the horror of the main part of the movie what, what i think for me makes this elevates this slightly is that it's a it's the whole voodoo stuff because um Which that is guy, we didn't even you don't even go into this you could have easily gone into that as well but it's not just a doll that's alive for the sake of it it's actually there's a reason the doll's alive it's because the guy's transferred his soul and, and that's kind of not makes it more believable <laughs> but it certainly gives it a little bit more weight. You know what I mean? There's a reason for it all to, to be happening. And yep. I love it. And it's great acting all round, well-directed, well-written, fantastic effects. And obviously spawned a huge franchise. And I'm a massive fan of Chucky and, and these, these earlier movies of his, definitely. Mm. And you are, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I've always enjoyed them. I don't own any of them. I own, well, I own this one on VHS, um, but I don't own any of these films. Um, I have the first four on DVD in a box. I, I kind of enjoy them. I think some of them I kind of enjoy, but I've never so I've watched them a couple of times here and there, but a long time ago. So it'd be interesting going back to them. Um, I I hmm. don't think I'm gonna start going. Oh, this is amazing. Uh, you know. No, I think the first three, even four, definitely have. They're definitely very, very original, but I think um, like a lot of franchises, when you get later and down the line, yeah, you know, it's a little bit <clears throat> meh. Yeah. But this is definitely um, probably one of the best in the franchise, and the originals usually is. Um, so a big thumbs up from me, or a little tiny Chucky thumbs up from me, maybe. But uh, a thumbs up from you on this one? Yeah, thumbs up from me. It's a great film, oh, um, oh. and... I, I would recommend it. And I introduced Jay to it. Jay is I was about 13. To ask you about it, Jay. Um, and I actually thought the movie was 18 at first, but it's only a 15, it's Charles Play. Um, yeah, Jay is 13. And I, I was like, so, what do you reckon? We did watch the remake as well. Um, they are actually going to I recorded their opinions, which we can listen to uh, after me and you finish speaking on this. I'll tap it in. Um, and really enjoyed watching this. Um, I was quite happy so, as I said like, no, I really enjoyed that like thoroughly kind of enjoyed sitting down to watch a movie you watch a movie and this does what it does you know I think that's what Tom ha Holland does as a director like with Fright Night Fright Night's that but with a better story I'd say Fright Night's better than Child's Play because um, I love that film but yeah and I think I think Good. your Sarah um, mentioned as well that she was quite surprised going back and watching this that because Chucky's become quite silly mm. over the most recent films. But when you go back and watch the first one or two, you realise just how entrenched in horror they were, actually. It was quite a dark plot about a lonely boy manipulated by a serial killer's soul in a doll, killing people. And this little kid's getting blamed for it initially. And, you know, it's got some good deaths and stuff. I think they are quite dark, the first couple as well. People, if they went back and revisited the first one who haven't seen the originals for a long time or ever maybe you'd be quite i think you'll be quite surprised at how good and dark the first couple of these movies are and um 
early on being all prosthetic like this first movie and the second movie really um it's quite yeah. nice like you, like nowadays like you can make a movie well using effects to take things away rather than add um which helps massively with strings or things um but this be you know you're quite safely watching this going i know quite firmly that there's nothing been touched or altered in a post digital world and uh, I'm watching what they shot on set and it's it's nice I enjoy, and I can't I enjoy fault that it, you know? I enjoy that and it'll stick the test of time the, the lip syncing doesn't really no. always then, flow no but point it like, oh doesn't... god that's not good yeah. It just like his little teeth, his eyes looking around, his That's little right. hands. Yeah, they, they worked really well with what they had. I'd be interested. It's kind of like the Jason masks, how they evolved, or the, the Michael mask, how they evolved and changed and gone back and gone forward and looked different. It'd be interesting to do that with this. Like when we do yeah. Time Team, which we will be going to very soon, yeah. you get to see like a transition... And it depends on the who's producing it and who they've employed to do the design. And that's what I like about the newest Chucky, um, Cult of Chucky, because you get three of the different Chuckies that you had. Mm. You get a buzz cut Chucky, you get Chucky with the staples all over his face, and you get classic Chucky all interacting with each other. And it's like, ah, cool, I like this. Oh, right. Um, okay. okay. That'd be interesting. It's cool. It's cool. Well, um, let's find out what Jay has to say then. Yes. And then we'll come back and get into the time and machine. And then we just go straight into your stinky, stinky time machine. Indeed. All right, Jay, take it away. I'm sitting here with Jay. Doesn't appreciate me recording her, but Jay. Them. Uh, them. Sorry. Get pronouns right, bro. <laughs> right. Um, Be poggers. We just watched Charles play, but I'm actually just, uh, you. I'm not asking you for a review of your film. I'm not going to do that. What, uh, compared to the other one, because I let you watch the, the remake first. Trash. Say again. It was just trash. Why? <laughs> Did you see the Chucky in it? <laughs> it looked so bad. It was... I just... Let me let me search up the difference. No, I want to see the difference. What? How bad the Chuckies were? Yeah, how bad the Chuckies? And this one you've just seen was from like nineteen eighty eight. So like the like the, it's mm. Chucky. Then I think they used a, a kid um, for the shots of running around in in just clothes. Probably Andy, I guess. Um, the person that played Andy. Possibly. So you're looking at the differences between. The two Chuckies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the new one looks like utter trash. But you didn't like the new film. I don't Did like, like the storyline of the new one. It's just like, oh yeah, it's gonna make a chip in the in the robot go evil. Yeah, I can't even remember that. I was like, yeah, you're reminding me of it now. Yeah, terrible. D- but that one though, you're into that one, yeah. Yeah, that one's great. Yeah, absolutely yeah. cool. So you want to watch part two of me at some point? Yeah. Oh, right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Ryan smile. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> you poggers. I don't know what you're on about, 13-year-old. <laughs> Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your yeah? time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team! Whoa! Whoa. What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Oh, he's been dead a hundred years! Look at that! Look at that, that's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand! Oh, there's a dinosaur! Oh my god, look at that! It's something else! <laughs> Whoa! 2002! Sorry, <clears throat> that's worn off now, though. For some reason, uh... I find, it, I find when we're going through the, all those slipstream, like, wormy time tunnels when we're going through them all wormhole the wormhole whatever you call them because this is the thing you're telling me stuff as we go through it you're giving me information of how the shuttle works and all this shit and as we're going down and most of the time I don't, I've told you I don't care most you still tell me it's like this I can't understand a word you say to me I appreciate well, it good I'm glad you do because it cost me a lot of money to get this fucking time machine back here to 2002 18 years ago we are now alright go on then what have we got well Queen Mother died oh 
straight into that. Sorry okay. to hit you with that. Okay. She was 101 years old. The royal family do live a long time, don't they? Secret drugs. Well, I think they're just bionic. They've got all the best medication. Possibly. Cyberdyne Systems. That's their uh, their healthcare system. I, I was literally trying to think of the Bionic Man music, and I was going heart to heart. Wow. Do, 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 I can't think of the music for that, but I can think of the. What's the one with the dude with the jetpack in the creative pre-credit sequence? That was the Bionic Man, wasn't it? I think you're thinking about the Fall Guy, aren't you? That could have been the Fall Guy. Either way, it was Colt Seavers. Brilliant but telly. I don't know how you've gone away from the Queen Mother onto this. It's <laughs> the Fall Guy. Oh. But the Queen Mother, who famously starred in an episode of The Fall Guy. She didn't, but I wish she did. She uh, was 101 and she passed away. Bless her. Not an awful lot really happened this year. The only other things of note, really, are that there was a little bit of terrorism going on in America for three weeks in Washington, where two snipers were going around just taking people out randomly, and they ended up killing 10 people and injuring three more. Do you remember the Washington snipers? No. Wow, okay, this was like really like scary times in America. Three, Just three weeks it went on for, but it was just like they could, anyone could get it and from far, far away. These snipers were just taking people out. Boof, boof. They like ended up killing 10 people before we get, they got arrested. How many? Two, two guys? Two guys, yeah. I didn't know about this. Oh, my God. Where, where is this? Washington? Worth, Washington, yeah. It's worth looking into. It's an interesting story. Right. Scary though, because you imagine a sniper, you know, from you can do it from a mile away if you've got a good, good enough gun and snipe and you know, rifle and that. Yeah, crazy. Uh, the other thing really that happened was that the Mars Odyssey landed on Mars and found out that there were signs of ice and therefore water on the planet Mars. Pretty cool. That's it. No Martian dolphins yet, but I'm sure we'll find those at some point. Maybe. And that was literally everything in the news for 2002. So <laughs> let's quickly touch on what films there were. Um, this will put you in the mindset of, you know, where we were at. So we had Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers came out. So the second in the in the trilogy. Um, the second Harry Potter movie came out, Chamber of Secrets. The second Star Wars movie came out, Attack of the Clones. There's a lot of twos. There is a lot of 2002. Uh, the first Spider-Man movie came out with Tobey Maguire, directed by Sam Raimi. Yeah, it was quite a fun movie. Uh, Men in Black 2 came out this oh year as well. Oh, God. Um, I was in Canada for about four months of this year uh, because I went to watch a lot of these movies in the cinema in Canada. So I was, I was enjoying watching those, you know, in a big cinema like that. But Die Another Day, the worst Bond movie that I have ever seen came out this year as well. Is that as Piers, yeah? And it's got Madonna doing that god-awful song. Is that his Invisible Car? Um, no, that was the one in the Ice Palace. Oh, it might have been. No, it was the Invisible Car. You're right. Yeah, terrible film. Yeah, yeah. Talking of Ice Palaces, Ice Age came out this year. Not the Ice Age, but the um, the Pixar Ice Age I, or whatever. I like the Ice Age films. They're okay. I think they're alright. I've seen a couple in the cinema because obviously I'm a dad that has to go to the cinema to watch random shit. With the kids. The Capri- the Caprio is uh, around about this year again with Gangs of New York. I only saw that Good the first movie. time a couple of years ago. I thought it was alright. Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Um, Minority Report, Steven Spielberg did a science fiction I movie. I watched that. It's in my collection. I started watching that again recently, and I kind of got bored. It's got Tom Cruise in it, just way, running around. I got about 45 minutes into it, and nah, I'm not going to bother. Okay. And I know a big favourite of yours that came out this year is My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I never know you're a big fan never, of that one. Never seen it. Couldn't tell you. Don't know what it's about. <laughs> never seen it. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you what it's like. <laughs> Brilliant. Who was in the charts, I hear you ask, in 2002? Uh, I know I'm going to go Craig David. Well, let me let me flip a few 2002 people in your way. Good Charlotte. They were out this year. Well, I don't... I recognise the name. What did they do? Sing it. Uh, Sing it, baby. I don't, 
I don't know. So They're you're... one of these sort of punk bands, aren't they, from the, the early 2000s? Good shot. I'll look it up while you keep talking. Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah. Eminem? What, was that the first time Eminem and Eminem and Eminem got around? No, no, this is just who was popular. This isn't the first time these people came out. This is just who was popular at this point. The Offspring. I like Offspring. I've always yeah. been a fan of Offspring. Justin Timberlake. No doubt. Oasis were still kicking about. Good it's an interesting time for music. Good Charlotte did the anthem, the river, I just want to live, lifestyles of rich and famous. Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. They're always complaining. I don't want to be in... Oh, okay. Oh, God, yeah. Anyway, listen. That's enough about that. Let's get on to the horror, because that's what I built this time machine for. Did? This is a guess. Did? <laughs> did? 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 Blair Witch 2 come out this year because I reckon they must have jumped in there pretty quickly to try and cash and get uh, some more that cash was, on that um, that was a couple of years ago now what? we're in 2002 was it was oh my god they knocked that out Done. in one in one year fucking hell yeah I think it was either 2000 or 2002 <laughs> so is Cabin yeah. Fever involved in this? well let me run through the horror movies of 2002 Gav do it I'm going to start off with some good bits and bobs for you Dog Soldiers Oh, yes, we covered that recently. Very good year for horror, because we got Dog Soldiers. We also got 28 Days Later mm -hmm. and Cabin Fever, you are correct. Have we done Cabin Fever? We have not done Cabin Fever yet. I don't, I don't think we have, anyway. Did, did, we I... did, it, did we do it for Eli Roth? No, we didn't. We should probably do Cabin Fever. Well, I'd like to do Eli Roth because I think he's a worth someone worth talking about. Um, we uh, did Hostel. Yeah, I'd do Eli Review. We could do Green Inferno and Cavern Fever. Could do because I want to discuss how like that dude smoker joint makes a whole village stoned. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Really strong weed. Um. So yeah, we got Dog Soldiers. Twenty eight days later, we got Cabin Fever. We got. Oh, nice. Halloween Resurrection with which, Buster which, For some reason, Halloween Resurrection somehow is starting to be a movie that I enjoy because I know it's shit. I don't know something about it. I always had a real soft spot for H20, but Resurrection is becoming up, is getting up there as well, I think. I've recently, I, I, earlier on today, I had to, I was like, I got, I got a new massive big camera bag to put stuff in, so I was like, right, because it'd be good to move around and keep things tidy rather than lots of things on the shelf. So I was going through a lot of stuff, and I, but I want a movie in the background <laughs> I'm not really going to pay attention to. And um, that, that, I didn't put it on. That would have been funny if I had, but I didn't. But that Halloween movie... For some reason, it's perfect for the background because it's just kind of like you get a bit of Michael Myers, but you don't really care. I watched it. Oh, it must have been about two years ago. I need to rewatch it, really, to be honest. Watch well, it, we'll get around to it. Shit and watch it while you're doing something else. You know. Yeah. Watch it while you're watching something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Eight-legged freaks. We covered that. Yeah. For our spider episode. That's the thing. It's fun. When you keep saying movies now, it's gonna get to the point where like, yeah, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. So that's why I'm wondering it, it, when we find something we haven't done, it's like jot that down. So yeah. Blade Blade Two. Uh, we covered Blade One. Blade Two was a bit more sort of horror, really. It was uh, Del Toro directing, obviously, and it was mm. yeah, I quite enjoyed Blade Two. Some good effects in it. Yeah, Resident Evil, the first of about 25 films, came out this year. Oh, my God. They this keep making the their last, Resident Evil films. This was the last brand-new VHS tape I brought. I was in HMV in London. Really? Yeah. And they had Resident Evil. And so that's so that's the year, the first Resident Evil. So they were still selling VHS tapes brand-new in HMV in London. In Why? 2002. No, it's probably 2003. No, probably 2002. Well, I mean, I've got I've got a, that one on DVD because I, I quite enjoyed it when it first came out. I go back now and I don't think it's that, that good a film, but I mean, like I said, I think they've made about six or seven of those films now. The first um, one's the first one's right. I, yeah, the first one's alright. Got that opinion of the others. Um, what else came out this year? Signs. Good shit. I really like that one, We've and done that. we are going to be covering. We haven't yet. 
we are going to be covering Shyamalan at some point. So that is one of the two I'd like to discuss with you. Mm. He's done The Visit. He's done Six Sense. There's a few that we could choose from. But I'm a big fan of signs. It genuinely scares me with those bloody aliens, the way, the way they walk past the camera. and ooh, It's got Joaquin Phoenix and Mel, Mel bloody Gibson's in it as well. Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson. Come on, Murta. You're too old for this shit. Yeah, almost slipping South African with your Australian there. Sorry about that. Um, talking of accents, good segue there, Gab. Uh, we got another movie coming out this year, starring uh, the one and only uh, Bruce Campbell as uh, Bubba Hotep. Oh, oh. Thank you very much. Good movie. What a weird film, but what a wonderful film. It's it's such uh, a it's such a nice idea. I should I've never told my mum about this. She's a big Elvis fan. I should say to her this movie. I should actually <laughs> I might lend it to her. Check out this movie. I've never told my mum about this. I haven't. She loves Elvis. Can you do a commentary track with your mum of Bubba Hotel? I tell you what, should I try and sneakily record it? Yeah. We could put it on the podcast. That could be our Halloween episode next year. Just me, so it's my mum. Mum, check this out. Yeah, I might do. I'll see how it sounds. If I'll pop oh, up Gavin, the air. Why has he done that? Why is he talking about his testicles, Gavin? It'd be quite funny. I could do it for Patreon, couldn't I? It'd be hilarious. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm a big fan of Bubba Hotep. It's directed by the guy that directed all the fan has well, movies It's just a great well. idea. Elvis, Elvis yeah. just went, fuck this shit. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. It is really good. And... We've got it lined up to cover at some point because we're doing a Bruce Campbell special. So yeah. that is one of the two that we'll be covering. Um, a terrible sequel came out in 2002. Funny enough, lots of twos came out in 2002. Yeah. And it's the sequel to a film that a lot of people didn't know they made a sequel to. And I'm talking about American Psycho 2. Did you know about that? Yeah, well, wasn't that a female? Uh, uh, yeah, it's got um, the girl that does Meg from Family Guy in it. Oh... The hot one. And if my wife says and she's not hot. You know what I mean? Mila Kunis. That's it. I was trying... I, all I kept thinking was My, My Re Silas. What's her name? <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? My Re Silas. <laughs> What's her name? Miley Cyrus. That's her name? No, it's not. What's it called? I don't know what you're talking about. What's that pop singer? My, my re- <laughs> What's the <her> name? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Miley Kunis is in this film. But you, you know the do you, pop... Do you mean Miley... Billy Ray Cyrus's daughter? Yeah. So I'm saying Miley right. Cyrus. So I'm is saying that, that right. Was I saying that right? <laughs> No, it sounds, <laughs> sounds like foreign words now, doesn't it? My dear Cyrus. <laughs> What's going on? What about the my dear Cyrus? <laughs> oh, man. So, Doctor, what do you think this rash is? Well, it looks like you've got a touch of the Miley Cyrus there. <laughs> Take this cream, put it on immediately. You'll be fine. Oh, man. Um, so, moving away from American Psycho 2, which is terrible. Don't watch it, anybody who's listening. Uh, we did get The Ring come out this year which is the american version of the ring which i really enjoyed this what do you think of the ring the american remake of the ring um oh i'm thinking of the grudge uh the ring one. Oh, the rings the well one is that or is that the tv one both oh yeah it's the ring it's the tv of the well um i don't remember i remember the originals better than the uh, remakes actually who was anyone of note in the remakes uh, no. I love the fact you pondered with your dangling glass Naomi of Watts. wine there. You look so sophisticated. <laughs> I think Naomi Watts is in the ring. Um, let me just double check that for you. I think you're right. Uh, no, I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. I don't remember them, but I'm sure they're probably kind of creepy. Were they Ghost House? Uh, is it Ghost House Pictures, uh, Sam Raimi's production company? Um, I it feels it like it might, should be. Or may, no, I think the grudges were. But around that time, you did have like these remakes of Ameri- uh, uh, these like American remakes of these types of films. Um, yeah, because Jew on the Grudge got a remake, didn't it as well? But they, uh, they, they, they did. They were, they were all did. right as well, wasn't it? it was there Dark Waters? Was Dark Waters was another one. The Eye. Yeah, and they mm. were okay. They were like they were okay. You know, some you, of them were okay. Definitely, they sort of got oversaturated a little bit. 
Um, I think the first Ring was good, I thought, and I think the first Grudge remake was quite good as well. I didn't mind it, though, around the early 2000s, not sure these, because then we stepped into the torture porn thing with Hostel in a little bit. Yeah, in the D. Well, this is the year we've already talked Cabin Fever, so this is the year Eli came out and did his thing, so we are going to see him come back with Hostel soon. I watched a premiere of this at Fright Fest in 2002. Premiere of Cabin Fever? Yes. I've still got the uh, Razor Blade. Oh yeah, they give out blended. That's a bit stodgy. They give out razor blades to horror fans in at a, a festival. Yeah, plastic, not just the blade itself. You know, like a plastic coat with cabin fever written on the side. And I've got a box of matches as well. That's danger, man. Dangerous. Both of them are dangerous. Yep. <laughs> um, and a, a movie that no one talks about, and I'm a big fan of, came out in 2002. You might not even remember it, but it's called My Little Eye. No, I do remember it. Uh, uh, very early, got... early like uh, Halloween. With, Bradley uh, Cooper. Buster. Yeah, as the uh, killer. Spoiler. Yeah, and that's a really great. I watched spoiler. it again like, fairly it recently. I picked up a car boot, thinking, "No, I'll check it out again." Didn't didn't like it like uh, the first time I watched it. But it's a uh, CCTV stole like camera set up around the house, like like that Halloween movie of Buster Rhymes. Yeah, it is, and it was probably quite cutting edge when it first came out. It, it was, was around bit... about the time. Big Brother was everywhere. I got it from HMV. I remember, I remember picking this up and, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't okay. too bad. Uh, another film that came out this year, another sequel, a John, a sequel to a John Carpenter movie, and this one is starring the fantastic actor John John Bon Jovi. Vampires Two. Vampires. I love didn't move, I didn't mind this movie. Really, <laughs> even with John Bon Jovi. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Oh man! I can't I mean, tell you what happened, but you know, it, I think it's pretty fucking terrible. But yeah. I know some people really like this one. Yeah, and that's fine. Um, the only other film which I'm going to mention mm-hmm. is starring Sir Anthony Hopkins, Ooh. reprising his role as a uh, oh. actor. Red Dragon, not not that good. Yeah, not that good. Is that it's all right? With, uh, Edward Norton. Uh, let's just have a quick check. It's the one that's a remake of um, Manhunter, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Edward Norton, Anthony Hopkins, Ray yeah, Fiennes, Emily Watson. It wasn't very good. No, it, it was all right. It just wasn't... I mean, the, trouble, the problem is, you come in strong with Silence of the Lambs, how are you ever going to live up to that? Yeah. Even Ray Liotta eating his own brains. You know. That was slightly better. It was slightly better. But, like, Silence of the Lambs is just so good. I love Indeed. that movie. Can't wait to show that movie to Jay. That, uh, that was a really good episode we did, actually, where we covered that and Seven together. <sighs> that's a, that that's was a, really... That's a, nice, that's a fucking good banger, Double Bill. Yeah, it was ra- It was raining. I was drinking coffee. Imagine eating donuts, doing, like, a drive through now. I've never done a drive through but could you imagine, like, a, not drive through uh... Yeah, drive through Drive through. in. Drive in. Drive through. Not a drive by. Don't do a drive by. And a drive by is shooting people or doing whatever else you're out the window you want to do with people. Shitting. Drive in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> drive in. Drive in. I did a drive. I did a drive by shit the other day. Did you, Dan? Yeah. What's a, what's a drive out? Do you reckon? I guess when you just drive out. I know what a pull out is. Oh. Uh, right. So that's 2002. So it was a strange year, but we were getting some good ones, and we got some real classics in the form of Dog Soldiers and 28 Days Later. Also, a couple of favourites of mine and yours, Gav: Cabin Fever and Signs. Mm. The Resident Evil franchise kicked off. We got funny little movies like Bubba Hotep and My Little Eye popping up, and a couple of weird sequels like Vampires Live Mortis and Red Dragon. I'm going to take. I'm going to pick up three. Actually, I'm going to pick up four. I'm going to pick up Dog Soldiers, 28 Days Later, and I'm probably going to go Signs, and then my fourth one is going to be... Halloween Just for a laugh. Yeah, I'll go with that. Halloween Resurrection. Oh, that's what I'm trying to hear, Michael. Mikey! You're Mikey! So there we go. That's 2002. I'm so excited to see what keeps going on through these 2000s. I'm the clue. Um, right, get yourself sat down. We oh, hang on. Let me put my seatbelt on and my helmet. Yep. There we go. Let me spin this little helicopter propeller on top of your helmet. There we go. Brilliant. Right, ready? Mm-hmm. Ready? Yep. And. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. How's it hanging, Phil? Child's Play 2. He's the original. He'll take your breath away. This fall, Chucky rules. Did you miss me, Andy? I sure missed you. Child's Play 2. Keep an eye out for it. Child's Play 2 from 1990. While Andy's mother is admitted to a psychiatric hospital, the young boy is placed in foster care, and Chucky, determined to claim Andy's soul, is not far behind. Uh, I don't really remember this movie, but then I saw Jenny Agatha, and I was like, whoa, yeah. Jenny Agatha? American Girl for London, The Railway Children, when she was younger. Um, pretty good actress. Thought, God, this brings a bit of acting pedigree, pedigree to this. No, no, it doesn't. Um, no, because her accent is terrible in this. And some of her acting was just like, whoa, this was her not accent, what I was expecting. I don't she know. Kept, she's a she good kept actress, saying, so it's the direction. Listen, honey, I'll tell you what you need to do, because my my name is Jenny. And it's like, hang on a minute, are you American? Are you British? She was supposed to be American, but she couldn't really do the American accent. I don't want to go straight into Slayton's, because I really like this film. But, um, yeah, I just felt like her uh, her accent was a bit dodgy, really. Who else is in this? Alex Vincent's back as Andy Barkley, which is great. Um, Brad DeRiff has obviously comes back as Chucky. And again, it's a very small cast, really. Um, the set, really, there's only two sets. One is the foster home, and then we obviously get the huge factory at the end with the conveyor belt, which is like a video game come to life, really. Which is why I kind of love this this movie, really, the sequel, really. And the and his uncles and um, Bud Bud the Chud too. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my god! I can't even remember that movie, but I want to see it again. I've still not seen Chud the first Chud yet. It's on the list, so we'll be covering that soon. Yeah, when we do our VHS, grimy, we're all waiting for it. Yeah. We're doing a grimy New York uh, episode where we're covering uh, Basket Case and Chud. That is that is perfect. <laughs> I love the way that is perfect. Hmm. Well, you suggested it, so I put it on the list. See, that's, what, that's why it's perfect. <laughs> well, back to Charles Play 2. So this one came out two years after the first. So, you know, sequel time. But they did step up the effects, and the practical effects are even more top-notch. And you mentioned that Jay watched this with you and said that they thought that the effects were even better, and I agree. They are even better in this. Yeah. Chucky's got even more sort of emotion in his face. Um... And we get to see what the aftermath, really, of what happened to Andy, uh, you know, after that, that first one, with that terrible stuff he's been through. His mum was supposed to be in it more. Uh, it, she's not even in it at all. Um, they had an opening scene originally where you'd see the, a court case and his mum was going to go, you know, go to a psychiatric ward and Andy was going to get put into care. But they didn't have time to film it, just like Chris Sarandon was going to come back, just as a smaller version of his role but they didn't have budget to do that so they ended up chopping and changing changing so, bits so the, the story had a slight at least recap of the uh ending of the first at least yeah and and because of the budget really, they cut it out and that's such a shame really but they work well with what they've got which is they do introduce that this little boy is disturbed and that he is freaked out by these good guy dolls yeah, but and if a good guy doll continue a story you do need the continuation of what happened with the two policemen that witnessed it you yeah. needed just to have that even if it was one fucking sentence of what happened you could easily drop it in with the players you've already got going on in in front of you you could say um easily. cop 
cop belittled after the devil doll story or, ends up taking his own life after yeah, yeah. colleagues it's bully a, him it could so be a newspaper they're, they're looking at they put the newspaper down the woman looks a bit serious or something like oh my god or, and, and it's a newspaper article yeah cop takes his life after no one believes him or cop becomes vampire in fright night yeah there we go <laughs> cop found dancing in a jumper in a nightclub with michael douglas in a dance off Eating a ham sandwich. Old Sharon Stone. <laughs> the old ham so, sandwich. So we start off with that burnt doll's head from the first movie. And somebody is scraping off all the burnt plastic and cleaning up the skull. Why? Because so they, they want to remake this to prove that it wasn't the soul of a, 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 a dead a, a murder murderer. Is that what they're yeah, trying to do? Yeah, because because they're worried that that I mean their reputation, PlayPal, the company that makes good so, guy dolls. So so we should have had a little bit of Chris Sarandon, just a little bit, really. Just it's a shame because obviously we are going with what the policemen have said. That's why the company are making this because they're like we've got to prove that the doll wasn't actually real to the world. Okay, true, but this is also a sequel to a movie about a killer doll and they just wanted to bang it out two years later so that, I know that I'm talking about no, the, no, I'm, I'm just talking about saying. the actual story itself I agree with you I agree with you no but I'm talking about the story not the product the movie itself I'm talking about the story in the movie are you on a different wavelength to me no I agree no I agree okay cool yeah there's no reason why you know this is one of those stupid things they do in movies where let's get that possessed dolls let's clean it up and let's rebuild it hmm. well you know what's going to happen don't you yeah. Of course. And what happens is we get a Jason 6 moment, really, because they rebuild it, and Mr. Sullivan, the head of Play Pals, shows up. And they're like, oh, yeah, we rebuilt it. You know, we've cleaned it all up, get it a new body. Uh, it's great. You know, this is the one that everyone was worried about. It was possessed, or some factory worker had tampered with the electronics of it and made it go crazy. But we, we you know, it's all good to go now. And so that's we're going to be. Think. Okay. Yeah, and they're like, like, we're going to put these dolls back out on the market. Christmas is coming, and we are going to, you know, get the reputation back of good guy because they're like the Cabbage Patch dolls. Everyone loves them. But of course, while they're building this doll, as they go to put the eyes in, the machine starts to electrocute the guy yeah. who's putting the eyes in. And it's like Jason 6. Electricity brings it back to like a bit of Frankenstein. Mm. And, yeah, that guy dies, and uh, Mr. Sullivan's not very happy. And we know that that means Chucky is back. It does. We know that. he's fucking unstoppable. Well, we cut to Andy. He's now in foster care. He's not happy, is he? He's a very disturbed young man. Yeah. Rightly so. Can I get this out there right now? Not in front of me. He has one of the finest selection of knitwear I've seen in any film. Anytime you see Andy, he's wearing an incredible jumper. He's got rockets on them, footballs, spaceships. I just want all of the jumpers he's wearing in this film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is, I'm looking at one now. It's very um, Danny. Shining. Yeah, one of them looks like Danny's rocket jumper. That's a traffic light one. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Pretty, I want a traffic light jumper. Basic jumpers. Yeah, but they're cool, man. Yeah, no, I'm not saying they're not cool. I just want to get out of there. I think he's got. I think me and you could rock them. I think he, when he's older, he'll graduate into the sort of Michael Douglas basic instinct jumper, or the Fright Night jumper. Yeah. But right now he's rocking Danny from the Shining jumpers, and I'm all over that. He's got I think one, that's great. He's got one stripey one of a big airplane on the front, and it kind of looks like the airplane in 1943. That game. Oh yeah, great, yeah, great like game. Going along, it looks like that. Yeah. Well, there he is. So he is still dreaming about Chucky. Could we just you know, instead yes. of reviewing movies? Could we just review the uh, sweaters in movies? Different films. It's a totally different podcast. The sweater review. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another one that's got. We've talked about it in the past. The Thing had fantastic knitwear. That's some good knitwear in the Thing. I like, um, I like, I like some of those knitwear. jumpers are very cosy mm-hmm. especially this time of year you want to get cosy bit of knitwear oh yeah oh, 
I love yeah. it. In fact, Cut- my beanies are back on my head all the time now. It's brilliant. Cuddled up to Kurt Russell with his beard and his nice oh, cosy jumper. I'd love to give little Kurt Russell a cuddle. Having a little bit of Jim Beam and playing a bit of chess on his computer with him. Oh yeah, no, he'd call you a cheating bitch. He was. Jim bitch. Well, anyway, <clears throat> back to Charles play away from jumpers and sweaters and knitwear. So where are we at? Andy kind of recaps the first film quite quickly, really. Yes, I'm dreaming of him, but I know it's not real. I know that this doll didn't kill people. And I know that it's all a product of me being lonely and a little bit unwell. And my mum's now in a mental psychiatric ward, this, that and the other. And they're like, OK, that's fine. Well, here are some people that might want to help you and foster you. So he gets to meet Phil and Joanne. Joanne is played by Jenny Agatha, the nurse from... The sexy nurse from American Werewolf in London. She is a sexy nurse in American Werewolf in London. I always remember that shower scene. I can vaguely remember it. I can remember it. Shall I continue? Get on <laughs> with weird. it. <laughs> it just starts to sound weird after a while. So, uh, yes, he meets these people that want to foster him. Um... And they sort of hear his backstory and they think, well, he sounds like he's a bit mental. Do we want him? And they're kind of a bit apprehensive about it. But they do take him home. And on the way home, dun, 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 they almost have a crash with a good guy truck mm-hmm. full of good guy dolls. That might Can be an own. Uh, they get him home and the house is disgusting. And I was watching this this film with Alice and she said... What the fuck is wrong with the house? Why is everything pink and blue inside that house? I don't. I'm gonna have to look at that now, aren't I? It's at the interior is disgusting to this house. You let me know when you find pictures of it. What yeah, you think? I've got but, one. That's uh, fucking shit. It's <laughs> just fucking. Shit. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's really bad. Um, Andy gets to meet another foster person. And this is Kyla, or oh, Kyle, sorry. She's and a she, super badass chick smoking cigarettes in her room. She is kind of like a character you'd get in the Dream Warriors, the Freddy movie, Absolutely. isn't she? Absolutely. I thought She's she like was. I, I even looked her up. I couldn't really see her in other stuff so much. And I was just like, oh, yeah, she, um, no, she, I, I feel like she was. I'm going to have a quick look. Yeah, she's smoking. She's badass. And... <laughs> She's like, ah, no one loves me. No one cares about me anyway. I'm just going to smoke and get moved from foster home to foster home. Fuck you all. That's that. She gets told off by Jenny Agatha. Jenny's like, come along. Let me take you to your room, Andy. And his room is awesome. He's got, like, toys. She was in Cold Chucky. Uncredited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. She comes back in the final scene at the end of that. Mm. So his room is awesome. He's got loads of toys in there. Um, she's like, oh, by the way, there's there's more toys in the closet. And he's like, oh, wicked. I'll go and have a look. Well, stupidly, one of the toys that falls out of the closet when he opens it is a good guy doll, Tommy, yeah. which freaks him out. I'm Tommy. You want to play? And he starts freaking out. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I should have got rid of that. That was from one of the other foster children. She, Let me get rid of that. I know. It's just uh, for fuck's sake. Please, you know, I guess it's one of those things you could have missed if it's so popular. What, as they're saying that Chucky was. Um, the, the good dog, guy doll was. She, yeah, she wasn't in anything else, you know. It's really funny. She looks no. like her image. You look at her and you're like, oh, yeah, she's definitely in Nightmare on Elm Street 4 or something. She just looks like she was, but she's not, not really anything. TV stuff, nothing. Not you, yeah. not noble horror, and no other horror at all. I don't think, apart from uh, the curse. Yeah, I, I looked her up, but I couldn't see anything yeah, really. But she looks, she is, she is very well cast of that person you want in it. Yeah, mm. totally, totally. She would have been in, definitely been in. Yeah, one of those a Freddy movies. or a Jason yeah, movie. Yeah, or Friday. Yeah, yeah, Friday five. Um, <clears throat> so they take the doll away from from Andy because obviously that's quite hammering for him he had a bad incident last year he did have a slight incident didn't he (laughs) we cut back to the play pal factory where the guy who is a suck up to Mr Sullivan is in trouble so he decides he's going to take the Chucky doll home why he says to him get rid of the doll he takes it with him I would have left it in a locker or something which is why do you need to actually take it to a trash bin yourself we take it. He checks in the back of his car. Oh, um, yeah, no, he does. That's right. Yeah. 
And he thinks, ah, oh, he rings up his girl and he's, she's like, did you pick up that bottle of vodka? Oh, what he's car- probably taking it to her just to go, look what I've got or something, maybe. Well, he's got loads of toys in the back of his car. He, when he checks it. But the, what I want to talk about here is his date. He phones her up and he's like, hey, honey, I'll be there soon. She's like, don't forget, it's our two-week anniversary. Have you got the bottle of vodka? So they're celebrating their two-week anniversary by smashing an entire bottle of vodka. Party on. Fucking hell. I wonder what they get up to. What was their first date? Uh, a gram of Coke. Yeah. What's going to happen when it's their one year anniversary? Fucking hell. Heroin. Probably. Shooting each other in the arseholes. <laughs> the assholes. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, so that's what he's doing. We'll come back to him in a minute. Back at the foster home, uh, there's a phone call. Uh, and this is because Chucky's got on the the car phone and he calls the foster home mm. where, where where Andy originally was. And he says, oh, hi, I'm Andy's uncle Charles. Is he around? And the woman's like, oh, no, he's not. But let me give you the address and everything of where he's going to be living from now on. OK, no data protection or anything back then. Just give you all the information. That's not a problem at all. The guy gets back in the car and Chucky pulls a gun on him. Now, he doesn't question the fact that there's he, a, uh, a toy with a gun. Uh, I, I said this, then we kind of realised, Sarah and I realised, that he actually doesn't see who it is with the gun. He yeah, I realised that be, after a while. Yeah, but at first you're like, are you not slightly surprised as a toy? Like, you know, with a gun to he says, no questions, just drive. He's still and, quite uh, cool about the situation, though. I guess it's maybe you sort of expect it. It's like when you go... At, have you have you got your mug of money, son? What? What, Dad? Have you got your mug of money, son? You always got to have some mug of money in the other pocket, like a dollar bill. That's the one you say. <laughs> that's, there you go. Mug yeah, because he's like, what do you need? What, you know, I can pull over, so I go to a cash point. What do you need? And the guy's and Chucky's just like, just drive. Um, and then he gets the plastic bag over his face. And uh, he kills him. Yeah. Dead. He didn't turn it. He's not got his vodka date at all tonight. Sorry, mate. No. She's at home like, I want vodka. And we cut back to Andy, who's been, who's been read a story by Jenny Agatha, who's reading Hansen and Gretel. And she does that thing that all parents do, where she gets halfway through the story and she pretends that's the end of the story. She says, and Hansen and Gretel entered the forest and they all lived happily ever after. And he's like, hang on a minute. We've just got to this bit. And she's like, oh, don't worry. And he's like, no, no, there's more to the story. She says, we'll read the rest tomorrow. I do. 99% of the time, I, I do the whole chapter. Just saying, just saying out there, just giving myself some props on that shit. But not the whole book in one evening. Yeah, but she wasn't reading a, a detailed book. It was only like a fucking kid's book, wasn't it? She couldn't. She, you got to be careful. you got to know better with your selection. You don't want to disappoint the kid. Just get a book which yeah. is not as long. It's easy. It's true. Well, Andy does a little terrible little bit now where he says, I miss my mother. And his mum is, you know, locked up in a psychiatric ward. Will I see her again? That's what he says. You might see her again. Don't That's worry. pretty horrible. Like, his dad died. He hasn't got a brother or sister. His auntie Maggie his was thrown out a window. His mum is the only, you know, close person, really. Uh, well, he's got his aunt and uncle there, I guess. Well, they're That's not his uncle, they're just fosters. Oh, oh, oh right, okay. Um, they're just trialling him in their foster home, aren't they, to see if they want to take him on and then put him onto another home eventually. It's really sad, um, the whole situation with foster children. Great, great moment now, though, because Chucky, now he knows where Andy lives, he turns up at the house and he gets to meet the Tommy doll. Mm. And he's like... Hi, I'm Tommy. Want to play? And I think he just doesn't. He just kill it. He like stabs it. He says, "Hug this." He oh, says, yeah. "I like hugs." And he's like, "Hug this." And then he buries it in the garden under the swing. Yeah, little shit. And he then replaces it with himself. So you know, why wouldn't you think it was Tommy? It's just a Tommy doll, but no, it's really a Chucky doll. Ooh. The morning happens and. The very lovely little statue that means a lot to Jenny Jenny Which Agatha. We did have a little broken. scene of a backstory saying it's been in my family for generations. 
this little piece of it's like the statue from the Goonies it when they knock little the little vase. They knock the penis off the statue in the Goonies. It's <laughs> funny. It is funny. But yes, the statue's broken because Chucky broke it and Obviously, immediately they're gonna blame this dude. Well yeah, he it is the first day he's in the house and they said don't do it and it's like mm, that's probably him. Well, they, they blame Kyle and Andy, and, I, and she's like, well, I, I didn't do it. And he's like, well, I didn't do it. And then because they're, neither of them own up to it, they get made to do laundry in the basement. They have to, because even though the parents fully well know uh, it's this kid, it's his first day there, this has happened, they know that you, you can't go that heavy on him for his first time, so they're still being cool with him, so that's why they've grounded, well, essentially grounded both of them. But this is a good um, scene now, because you get... Andy and Kyle start kind of bonding while they're doing laundry. Yeah. And she's smoking cigarettes. There's a funny bit where she's like, hold this cigarette. And she goes off to do something. And he's only like seven or eight. And he sort of goes, (laughs) so that's coffee. Yeah, that's funny. She's like, what are you doing? You should be smoking. He's like, well, you're doing it. (laughs) He doesn't know better. Well, that's what kids think when they see their parents smoking. Well, he comes up the stairs, and as he opens the kitchen door, he hears the the foster parents saying, "I think we should get rid of him. I think he's off his head. He's Brilliant. nuts." Brilliant. He's, uh, and he's thinking, "Oh, for fuck's sake! This oh, my life shit, isn't it?" Um, so he then sort of goes <clears throat> and enters the room, and they just sort of ignore him. Really, he finds the Tommy doll. Hi, I'm. Tommy. Tommy, he almost says Chucky, doesn't he? Yeah, it's very good. It's, it's really clever. I'm wanna play, and Andy for some reason he takes the doll outside. I don't know why he's falling back into this routine. He t- he's trying to prove to them that he isn't crazy, and he can friend be friends with a doll still. Okay, all right, okay. That's his plan. Yeah, uh, this movie. I didn't quite, really get. Well, yeah, well, this movie's quite good what we're saying so far everything that's going into it is very very realistically done and very realistically comes across but that's what he's doing yeah because that, that would explain it then okay thank you for that because i didn't realize that's what he was doing i just figured why why is he reverting back to old routines but okay yeah he wants to prove to them that he can move he, forward and this is how sad this is even more for andy this kid He's he's been in these foster homes or this first time in his foster home for what this dr- dramatic thing that's happened to him, and he's gone there to see if he could stay there, and he's come upstairs like something's happened, and he's like, oh for God's sake, because he doesn't think it's Chucky at this point. He's just like, I I didn't do it, and he's just like, well everything I do, nobody believes me, and he's gone back to that, and it must be so horrible for him to be feel so alone. And then to come up and hear that uh, that conversation talking about you, it's not nice to have yeah. someone talk about you anyway, but to hear that them talking about you and the way you feel so like, he's such a little kid, he must be feeling so like insecure and like out of his depth and doesn't know what to do. So he's going to do what he can to make him feel better. So this is how much of a decent kid he is as well. Is that so he sad? thinks if they see him playing and acting normally yeah. with a doll, yeah, they feel they'll, better. They'll so he's, to he, wants to, he wants him to make him feel accepted there because he wants to do best he can. So he's trying to do what he can. It's just the odds oh. against him because he's got this little fucking cunt up, Chucky. <laughs> well, he places uh, Chucky outside, or who he thinks is Tommy outside, and he's swinging on the swing, and Kyle's doing some gardening. But Chucky notices that as they're swinging, they're kicking up the dirt, and the dirt is obviously revealing slowly that the real Tommy doll is buried underneath the swing. Mm. Oh, so Chucky's sort of staring at it. Well, they don't, not much really else happens there. That's kind of it. Nighttime rolls around. And uh, we get some fantastic animatronics of Chucky moving around now. And he ties up Andy <laughs> in his bed and he gags him. And he's like, hey, kid, we're going to play hide the soul again. And luckily, thank God, Kyle was out having a bit of a, a party time because she comes in the window and interrupts the whole soul thing. She thinks Andy's playing. She's like, how the hell do you tie yourself up like this? Yeah, uh, yeah, because I was questioning it. Like, is she not? Is she not really like? How, no, honestly, how did you tie yourself up like that? Even if he's playing around he's himself, gagged himself. How does she think he's just having a laugh? But as like, how has he actually tied his 
both feet to each or and hands to each corner of the bed and gagged himself. How has he actually done that? Unless he has some elaborate pulley system, so it all goes together when he pulls one string. It all shing. How has he done it? She's she's just like ah. Oh. But then again, she's probably fucking stoned and pissed. And I was going to say she's she's been out partying, sucking so someone she... off in the car. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you went there, didn't you? Jesus Christ. This movie's got it all. Vodka, orgies, blowjobs in the car. Um. Anyway, so, yeah, so she interrupts, but then they are interrupted by the foster parents coming in, and they say, oh, I can't believe that you tied up poor Andy just so you can go out and sneak out partying. And then <laughs> they, think even more... they think she's... <laughs> look, look, we didn't think when we got a little foster brother in here for you, you'd tie him up so you could go party him. He was just asleep. You could have just left him alone. You know, it's just like, what the fuck? Did you actually think she's tied him up to go out partying? I've probably told this story on the podcast before, but I'm happy to go. Take, yeah, does it strap in. Does it diverge into your diarrhea? No. What, it, what happened was my brother was about five maybe mm. and me and my sister decided we would let's tie him up yeah and he was like yeah all right he was a kid so we tied him to the bunk beds um one hand to one post the other hand to another post then his leg so he's kind of crucified really to oh my god with like a rope like cord from a, a dressing gang but then realized that his hands started turning a bit purpley blue and i was like it. And I was, and he started crying because he could see that we looked worried. And I said to Emma, my sister, go get some scissors. You so she went case. off to get the scissors. So I'm trying to cut the cord and he's crying and screaming. My mum comes in the room. And my brother is like crucified on the bunk beds, purple hands and feet crying. I've got a pair of scissors at his wrists. Obviously, I'm trying to cut the cord, but it looks really bad. She's gone nuts, my mum. And you know, like people talk about that mum Holt strength where mums can just like flip a car over to get their kid out. She just like snapped that cord that I couldn't even cut. She just went snap, 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 got it off, took him downstairs and said, you're all in trouble when your father gets home. You're that classic line. And what happened? We, we got fucking, oh, dad. I think my Sega got taken away from me for, for about a week. Did you ever get a wooden spoon? Uh, no, thank goodness. My... I got a slap on the butt a couple of times, but I never got the wooden spoon. Yeah, I used to get it. I should have got that because that was pretty mean that I did to my, that to my brother. Yeah, I did some fucked up shit. You didn't even have a brother. Who were you doing it to? There's a dude that came round and just had some. I think his <laughs> appendix had come out, and I, I don't know why I did it. I was in the in the back garden. Oh God, what did the, you do? Well, we had a swing in the back garden, so I just pulled it. Well, I didn't know it was going to hit him there, but I pulled it swing right up, and I swung it down really hard. And he's on the other side of the swing, and it went straight into where he just had his operation. I thought you were going to say like you poke your finger in the hole or something. No, no, nothing like that. Didn't you say you threw something once and it hit a kid in the head? Yeah, no, that's my Rambo playset, and I had the uh, the fake knife with the uh, compass and the matches in the end, and I threw it. Luckily, it was a blunt end. It went straight into his eye. I did like, <laughs> <laughs> and luckily it was. Otherwise, I'd probably taken his eye out. Uh, I think I got a wooden spoon then as well. I hid. Might have been my head. I hid in the garden. I found a blanket, just hid under it. And I hear my mum just stomping around, screaming my name. Oh, God, you know you're in trouble. When you hide... Oh, fuck. I was just like, oh, I fucked like, up bad. If, I, I fucked if up I'm bad. invisible, they won't find me and I'll get away with this. But they always find you and you never get away with it. <laughs> I, no, I, I got away with stuff. But I, I got away bad. with a couple of things, but yeah. I was a pretty honest kid. It's the ones where you uh, fuck up bad. That's the ones which are more interesting to tell now. Yeah, like me crucifying my brother. So yeah. there we go. Yeah. So that uh, that brings us that ties this <laughs> nicely back into Andy, who's tied up at the bed. So they untie him. Carl's in serious trouble. She's grounded. Um, she's probably going to end up going back to the foster home, from what they're saying. Phil, uh, the foster dad, takes the Chucky doll or the Tommy doll, as they think it is, and he throws it down into the basement. And uh, Chucky looks down at himself, and he's bleeding. And he says, "Oh no, I'm turning human again." So he's really annoyed that he's already starting to become human again. He must be able to start feeling pain as well. Yeah, I guess he would do, yeah. Hmm. 
because he, he, he was normally invincible, but yeah, he's already becoming a human being. Oh dear. So Andy gets on the school bus the next day, and all the kids on there are sort it's of like, no, you can't to me, no way. Yeah. And we see some sneaky little Chucky legs climbing underneath the school bus as it drives off. And I love this whole scene with the teacher now. It's a great, great little scene. Mm. So Chucky's in the school. Um, and I love the fact the teacher's reading Pinocchio to the class. Oh, see what they did there? Yep. Little wooden boy comes to life. Yeah. Tells a line, his woody grows. His nose grows, sorry. That's something else. Ridiculous. It's a different story. It's Pinocchio cock. Pinocchio cock. <laughs> Pinocchio cock. Well, what would you call a porn version of it? Pinocchio cock. Oh, it's great. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I thought you were taking the piss. I didn't realise you were actually happy that I'd come up with that. Yeah, no. And uh, as he lies, his cock gets bigger. It's, yeah. it's, it's probably been done. I'm sure it has. Pinocchio cock. It has. It's <laughs> got a cock's are brilliant. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I'm sure we could do that for each of the Disney films, but that's for another episode. So anyway, back to say, this. So yeah, commentary for it. The what? Sorry, the commentary for it. Pinocchio Cook. Oh my god! We could just make the film. Uh, so no. <laughs> she's reading the Pinocchio story. She's horrible to Andy because he's new. He's new in the class, but she's mean to him. Um, and he spots Chucky. She says, "Oh, shut up! You're a new boy. I'm in charge here." She makes him stay behind. She locks him in the classroom, which is a bit much, really, isn't it? Um, because, But the reason she does that is because when she finds Andy's work, his colouring in, it says, fuck you, bitch, written on it, <laughs> which is brilliant. And she is not happy about that. She thinks, well, why has Andy done this? It's a little shit. Yeah. She doesn't look like the sort of uh, teacher you want to have angry as well for the smallest things, let alone fuck you, bitch. She finds the Chucky doll, which Andy's terrified of, and locks it in the cupboard. Then she locks the whole room, and she goes off, probably for a cigarette and a brandy, like most teachers did in the early 90s. We had a science teacher that used to... I probably shouldn't tell this story. He won't be listening. We had a science teacher that used to go off and drink loads of whiskey. <laughs> he was in charge of Bunsen burners and chemicals. Really? And Yeah, he would, there was, basically, there was two what science... What do you think of whiskey? Oh, yeah. And there was two science rooms, but in between them was like um, a utility room that had all the equipment in it. And he used to, he was always in there. And I remember one lesson in the summer, he, we walked into class and he went, all right, listen, you lot, I don't care what you do today, I'm going to be listening to the cricket. <laughs> And he just put on his little transistor radio. What, sit in the corner and, sat, and put his feet up? And sat there at his desk with his hands on his head, listening see, to the cricket. See, and we were allowed to do what we wanted. Yeah, so I was like gentlemen, setting fire was, to magnesium. This was education for us. They didn't, <laughs> didn't give a shit. And I was setting shit on fire. People were like going, oh, mix these chemicals together. And it was brilliant. We did nothing. I spent, I spent a lot of that that time talking about fresh prints because that was about the time we talked about this earlier i always used to talk about that in double science because it was on the that, the night before double science and a lot of people in my class watched it so it was great for me it was like great let's set things up on fire and talk about will smith for two hours this is great I... he ended up getting fired because he got caught going to the local pub with the maths teacher and they used to come back bright red in the face every lunchtime and one of them i think the science teacher got fired the math teacher was allowed to keep his job but things, it's bad isn't it i i had a art teacher that was sleeping with one of the same people in my class oh my god yeah it was a dude and the girl in my class i won't say names oh my god what, what she was like underage she was my age yeah well yeah yeah <gasps> And once, That's terrible. And once she nicked his car. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I won't say names. Wow, it's all coming out. This is the the episode where we reveal everything. Yeah. I won't say more. I was being to my brother. Yeah. Uh, you were... Uh, it was just the, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't really... I, didn't we know about it until later on? Then you're like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, and I yeah, think, I think he pregnant. may have even been married as well. 
gosh. Ah, oh, the 80s, eh, Gaff? They're yeah, a lovely the, time. The late 80s, early 90s, yeah. <laughs> That's what you got. That, no wonder I've got no fucking education, do you know what I mean? The teacher's more interested in fucking the chick in my class. <laughs> well, anyway, this teacher in this film, she locks Andy in the classroom, and in the cupboard we can hear Chucky saying, Let me out, Andy. And Andy thinks, well, I'm going to climb out the fucking window. So he does. He climbs out the window. Good lad. And the teacher comes back in. She's like, Andy, where are you? And then she hears the noise in the cupboard and thinks, well, he's obviously in the cupboard. I don't know how. How did he get in the cupboard that I locked? I don't know, but it must be him. And uh, she's immediately stabbed when she opens it with a ball pump, one of those pumps to pump up a football. Um, I would have quite liked it if Chucky had just popped her head like a balloon. But instead, he just sort of pumps her a little bit. That sounds rude, doesn't it? A little. He pumps her a little bit. And then uh, he says, you've been very naughty. And he gets a ruler. We don't see it, but he kills her with a ruler. Yeah. Basically, I guess he slices her with the end of the ruler. I'm not sure. Hmm. So Andy gets back and tells the foster parents about Chucky. Of course, immediately. We don't believe you. And in fact, we're going to probably put you back in childcare because look what's in the basement. But, Tommy is still in the basement. But before that, they do get a give, like they pass around a bit of advice about being tough. What do they say? I can't remember what it is. Um, they, they do this thing, but it's a nice little touch. It was just another little thing in it where they just... Oh, do you just... mean when, when Kyle says to him, listen... What, one thing I've learned about being in foster care is yeah, you can right. only rely on one person, and that is yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's nice to just have these little touches in it. They didn't need to put this stuff in it. So this does kind of elevate this film high, slightly higher than some other films. It's more dramatic, yeah. it's more dramatic and which is what you kind of want, really. Because they're getting separated now again. They've yeah. only just got to know and, each and other. And it's such a shame she's trying to give them a little bit of advice about how to just play in the, uh, the uh, foster system. At night time, Andy grabs a bread knife and he decides to go down into the basement to sort this situation once and for all. Chucky... I remember he's like going like, oh, granddad, let me cut up the roast beef. As a kid, I remember granddad, and I was like, yeah. oh, let me do it. And let you have a go. Yeah, and just fucking ripping it to bits, making a right fucking mess. It's one of those like electric bread knives yeah, that my, my parents up, had. Big, really big, chunky plastic with a little blade. Yeah. It was such like an 80s it thing like that your parents would buy at Christmas. Yeah, yeah it, was it didn't work shit. very well. That was fucking shit. It was like really, really blunt. And I always remember thinking, this is like a chainsaw, but it was like shit. Yeah. And it Indeed. sat on the side in a rechargeable thing. Big plastic thing. I think my parents had a cord on there. It was a very like short cord. Hell. So you had to like, you, couldn't, you could only cut the turkey near where the socket was. <laughs> shit, really. But yeah, he's got one of these bread knives, these electric bread knives, which is cool. Goes in the basement, Chucky isn't there. And it's quite a scary, tense scene here now, where Chucky's definitely somewhere in the basement. He attacks and he's very Andy. Brave. He's, oh, he is very he's brave. determined, yeah. I guess, to get rid of this fucker. Yeah, but don't forget, this is the end, friend. He's a badass. Yeah. He's got that in him to be a badass. Yeah. And he's just had the pep talk from Kyle. He said, you can only rely on yourself. Yeah. She's like Stallone. To survive war, you've got to become war. Yeah. That's what she's basically told him. So he he fights Chucky. Chucky bites him. Phil comes downstairs. He's like, what is going down? Andy, put down the knife, it Andy. Isn't, it isn't best to see this kid going, with a little knife. Like, oh, God, kid, come on. I'm trying to help you out here. You're going straight back to the foster home. Yeah. But Chucky hooks Phil's foot. And, uh, and as he falls, he says, how's it hanging, Phil? And Phil drops, lands on his neck in a very painful looking way, which immediately kills him. Hmm. Um, Jenny Agatha runs downstairs. And does some really poor in acting. Terrible. <laughs> Phil, oh, he's dead. It was really, really surprising. I was like, oh, God, this, this is awful. <laughs> like, what's happened? I don't really know what happened to her in this. Her accent shit, her acting shit. Generally, it's directing, which is going to be doing that, or editing choices. It's a strange one, really. Um, 
But yeah, the ambulance comes, he's dead. Andy is sent back to the main foster centre. Kyle says goodbye to him. She says, uh, don't let him get you. She kind of believes him. No. Hmm. Don't don't let him get you. Hmm. And she puts Chucky in the bin and smokes a what does she do? She smokes Oh, she she swings on the swing and this is where she finds Tommy buried. That's right, she's smoking on the swing and Kyle finds so Tommy buried. She goes back to the bins and looks in the bins and there's no Chucky. Mmm, Chucky is missing. And this is time it's time to go hunting with a knife now. And we find Jenny Agatha has been killed by her sewing machine and had her throat slit. Yeah. Not a very good death. I thought, you know, when you hear the sewing machine, because that's quite a distinct noise. You walk in the room, you expect, I expected to see like stitches all over her. It wasn't really that graphic, was it? It wasn't, I could have done more with that death. I was disappointed. Poor Jenny Agatha didn't have a good ride at all in this, did she? Yeah, it's not very good acting. Shit, Dev. Yeah. She didn't even get her boobs out in the shower like she did in American Warfare in London. No. Um, that would have been a redeeming factor. It would have been quite odd. <laughs> I suppose it would have been. Yeah, but you could have had Chucky spying on her, saying, I don't know. What, a little doll perving on an older woman? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weird, Dan. Um, Chucky attacks. Why do I feel like I'm in tr trouble? Well, this one you're coming off well proceeding in this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, she's you're not. Anyway. You're not. You're not. Just the normal Chucky, sort of amount of purr from you, really. <laughs> Chucky attacks Kyle, and he hides under the bed. He trips Kyle up, and he makes her at knife point drive him, um, drive him away. And the cops pull them over at one point. But the cops let them off because he's like, hey, you've got one of those good guys. And he's, she's like, he's like, oh, man, I love those. They're brilliant. Oh, that one's got a nosebleed. She's like, yeah, yeah, some of them don't just wet themselves. They bleed now. So, and he's like, oh, oh, all right, cool. Well, off you go. If it bleeds, we can kill it. If it bleeds, we can play to the end. <laughs> So, meanwhile, Andy's back in the foster care and Kyle crashes. Chucky goes through the windscreen. Well, she, she slams bams. her brakes on, doesn't she? Yeah, oh, yeah that's right, because the cop says, Buckle safety up. first. And she does, which was a rare thing in the 80s, as we discussed earlier, you know, when you're in the back of your mate's car. It's weird, wasn't it? You'd be sort of like, get me to hospital quickly. I'm really ill. No worries. Let's go to really fast. No seatbelts. Get to the hospital. And the doctor's going to smoke a fag while he talks to you about what's going on. So what's going on then? It's My so parents' weird. first two... My parents' first two cars didn't have, have seatbelts seat in, in the back. back. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> and cool. there was, and, and we never wore seatbelt in the front. Yeah. There was only, I think, uh, not even my dad wore a seatbelt no, really in the driver's. I, I remember it just being like the driver, and it, it wouldn't even be frowned upon if you didn't put your seatbelt on. Yeah. Not, not in any way. I, I used to it's drive. Right. I used to drive. I drove around for quite a, uh, a while without a seatbelt strange isn't it you wouldn't think of doing it now these days it was just like, I'm just like wearing my seatbelt you didn't really think of consequences I don't know why and, or, or why do you feel more now pressured into like your safety well you know it's, not... it's just more uh, part of society really now and isn't that, it it's if, a good thing and to do. your car tells you if you're not wearing your seatbelt yeah bing 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 yeah just like back in the 70s when everybody was drink driving yeah you know, these things change because we realise actually everyone's dying. No one smokes in hospitals anymore, Gav, as we brought up several times. And that's because we realise that as a stupid thing. <laughs> what, what, at what point did they go, yeah, it's probably not a good idea, is it? It's not a good idea. I've said it before and I'll say it again. At some point, someone must have delivered the news, I'm afraid you've got cancer, whilst the cigarette was dangling out of their mouth. And they thought... Ah, oh, we should probably not smoke while we're in hospitals. They probably offer the fags to the patients. I'm really sorry. You've got cancer. Would you like a cigarette? To just drink it through. And they probably, <laughs> yeah, but back in the day, they thought smoking was fairly good for you, didn't they? Yeah, well, it was promoted as a health kick a long time ago. And that, that's probably just because the tobacco companies just uh, bribed the medical associations to say that. I've seen I've seen adverts where there's children smoking, like a, an advert of a, with a drawing of a child, you know. 
If you've got a bad throw, have a Marlboro. What? This is a child. This is what are you doing? <laughs> it's crazy. Let's get you hooked on our drug, and then you'll just keep buying it and buying it and buying it. A lot of money in the uh, cigarette world, isn't there? Mm. Mm. Well, going back to Chucky, <laughs> we've got we've gone on some fantastic uh, tangents this episode so it's, far. It's been out there. Crucifixions of children. My brother. That, that I mean, you know, yeah. your teacher, your pervy teacher, <laughs> Mister. No, <Not Okay>. <laughs> I, I could, oh, dude, I just, I wouldn't want to go into it because, oh. like, surely at some point he must be shitting himself. Do you know what I mean? At some point, the door's going to come knocking. The door's going to come knocking because <laughs> doors knock as well. The door knocks back. <laughs> Part oh, two. I like that. Yeah. Boards don't hit back. Bruce Lee. Um, anyway, back to Kyla. So, she, yes, she rams him out the window. Chucky he flies out the windscreen. Um, he grabs her. He says, playtime's over. He gets on her back. And she has to walk around now with him on her back with a knife to her. Um, the fire alarm gets set off at the kids' home because of them. And all the kids escape. And he sees Kyle with Chucky on his back, or her back with a knife. And uh, he says, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stab you unless you... Uh, you do what I say. He stabs the woman who runs the care home, and she dies a funny death on the photocopier. Yeah. You get to see her face yeah. photocopied a bunch of times. It is funny. It's fun. Have you ever done your uh, bum on a photocopier? No, I've never done my bum. I've done my face oh, and my hands. Oh, I've done my face. I've done my bum as well. I didn't do my bum because I heard a story once of a person, the fire department had to come out because somebody it sat on the photocopy, but it smashed the glass and their butt got stuck in the glass and it, it started to cut their butt cheeks a bit and they didn't want to move. So the, the fire police, the uh, fire park department had to come out and cut them out of a photocopy. And I thought, I don't want me to be that guy. <laughs> Do you reckon it's a big person? <laughs> Might have been. Might have been. But also like, what are those pictures going to look like with your bollocks and your bum hole just on there? Just... Well, what, yeah, but what, <laughs> what about the one who's broke all blood and shit everywhere? Oh, dear. But yeah, I've done my face and my hands. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I had boobs, I'd definitely do my boobs as well, actually. You've got a cog. Yeah, but are you going to get that up on there? <laughs> See, this, like this, is the tr- this is the trouble with it. If a woman got her boobs and pushed on there, everyone would go, ah... If we got our cock sandwich on, everyone go, oh, what's wrong with you? I don't know if we'd all these days go, hey! Then again, I guess if a, a chick got their Vegeta's out on the old photocopier, oh. I expect they, that would be actually a bit like, ah. So I guess that is the same. But then again, we wouldn't part chest. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where this I'm going with this. Fantastic tangent here, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere with this. I think it's equal sexual. What I'm saying, guys, is whatever you are, whoever you are, you whatever can, you're you into, can get your bits out. Photocopy your bits. Do send it. them in to Gav. <laughs> P.O. Box. One, two, three. Tag me. <laughs> please don't do this. No, someone anyone. can. Can someone please do? You can tag me on oh all the God. all the things. Don't have to do rude. Can someone please do a photocopy picture? Then uh, uh, post it on their social platform of choice and tag me i'm sure i'm going to be there somewhere okay well the lady dies and we get to see her image on the photocopy of her pulling different faces chucky corners andy in that same room and he makes her get in a, makes chucky uh, sorry andy get in a van and kyle chases them in a car andy um what does andy do Oh, they get chased on foot. In this is where we enter the main part now. We enter the good guy factory, the warehouse where all the good guys, hundreds of them, are stored. And Chucky starts to do the spell on Andy. Quite a coincidence, isn't it? What all the good guys? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Mm. Well, the reason for this, Gav, is because this was originally this film was going to be set at Christmas. Um, and that's why there's so many of them ready to be shipped out for Christmas. Oh, yeah, it's funny enough. The first one should have been a Christmas movie. That would have been quite good. Or this one. This one should have been a Christmas movie. That would have been quite nice. Just put a few decorations, a little bit of a Christmas song here and there, and a Father Christmas ringing a bell in the background, and it would have been quite good. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Boys and girls, do you want a good guy doll for Christmas? Yeah, exactly. You could do some commercial on TV. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, we go into the factory. Like I say, Chucky starts doing his give me the power I beg of you spell. Um, Kyle's searching around um, and Chucky gets a nosebleed and the spell hasn't worked. I've been in this body for too long. No, it's not working well for him, is it? No, he's not happy. He's he's, a, well, Kyle, he, he's very unhappy, actually. He gets like a really moody little kid. He's very, very, very angry. And Andy and Kyle find each other and they stop running around. This bit reminds me a bit like of The Shining because it's a big maze. maze. Yeah. Yeah. They're running around this huge maze full of, which is made up of boxes and boxes and boxes of good guy dolls. And uh, they climb up a conveyor belt. Uh, Chucky chases them. Um, His hand gets caught in a gate. And he does an Ash from Evil Dead, doesn't he? Well, he's a person now, so it must have hurt a little bit, I guess. Yeah, he rips his own hand off, and then he gets a a, like a switchblade knife, Mm. and he rams it into the stump, and then tapes it up. So he's now got not a chainsaw for a hand, but he's got a little knife for a hand now. Yeah. So it's definitely a little Evil Dead montage there, isn't there? It's got to be honest. It's got to be. And they head into the toy manufacturing room, which is like, I mentioned this earlier, it's like a video game with conveyor belts and bits that come down. You know, you can imagine Sonic the Hedgehog having to dodge between all these these bits when, on a Sega game. And an alarm goes off because the conveyor belt gets clogged with lots of Chucky dolls. And a guy comes out, there's one guy in the whole factory, he comes out to clear the dolls, and he lies in the machine, the machine that puts the eyes in the dolls. And Chucky slits his throat, and the fake eyes get shoved into the guy's eyes, and he's dead. And those eyes look crazy sticking out of that guy's face. Just the way he went about going to do his work, just like laying down like underneath it. It's like, well, your health and safety's off the chain. What's he doing, lying What's down doing? in a machine yeah. that, that stabs fake doll's eyes into the head of a doll? I know. He got what he deserved, Gav. I guess he did then. Well, Chucky uh, suddenly appears behind them and he falls into a hair stitcher which starts stitching loads of hair to him. This is again where we get scene after scene after scene of Chucky seemingly being destroyed and coming back, then getting destroyed but still coming back because he gets some hot plastic melted onto him and he's a giant big bloody mess where he looks like something from The Thing. Mm. Um, But then uh, a body swings down and knocks Kyle over and Chucky's crawling at them on a little toy truck with no legs. It was all a trick. He only lost his legs. It's pretty disturbing, isn't it? He's like, <laughs> get here, bitch. And he's like dragging himself along. And he then melts him again with even more hot plastic. Kyle falls onto the machine. Chucky is still alive. He's pretty much doing the thing here, isn't he? He's just like, he's this... like this big lump of. Yeah. Um, Kyle puts a hose in his mouth. And he turns into a big trouble in a little China scene. It's literally, right? you know, he's Robocop. Big little, big trouble in a little China. Back to Robocop. <laughs> and the thing. <laughs> that dude from the Robocop. But thankfully, this time he does explode and bits of him go everywhere. Yeah. And uh, they kind of leave and she's like, where are we, where should we go? Home? And he's like, where's home? And they're just homeless. I don't know. It's quite sad. Because, yeah, what have they got? They've got... Uh, uh, a really sketchy past following around with them, really. You know, and they've so destroyed the a factory. They killed a man. Well, helped a man in a factory die. The police are gonna be like, "What the fuck? We need to find these kids." But I don't it's know. It's gonna what... look like. Does I'm... part three continue the story of these two? Yeah, because that what well, it continues. Don't tell Andy's me. Don't story. Tell me. Oh, I look forward to watching that. Can't remember. Do you not remember anything about it? No, don't tell me. Okay, no, no worries. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover that again then uh, sometime sometime in 2021, that'll be. Okay. Excellent. Well, yeah, great movie. We kind of rattled through this one, but also we did have some tangents. It's not a lot going on. This plot is, is a I little like, bit simple. I like, the, I like the story. I like it very subtly, the dramaticness of it. You what know, I'm getting from these two films, Gab, is that you really like the realness of... I do. The, I do. The it's, vulnerability it's, it's, of the kid. And it's yeah. good, quite good storytelling. It it goes to A to B, uh, the film does. It does what it's supposed to do on the tin, you know. Um, 
and it's got a few other little things for measure which are good like brad the riff and chucky doll and it's and some killer. good deaths you know mm. it's it's fun it's like there's no reason to, I, if i had a choice if i was just going to throw on a movie from a franchise it's going to be a friday 13th film for me but these are fun yeah well i've seen a few people online say that they think the second one is actually they prefer that to the first one no. and i can understand no, it's a lot of fun one, in it first one's better i still i yeah i still definitely prefer the first one but i do really like the second one i really like that whole setting in the factory at the end i wish they could have spent more time in there really um this... my only criticism of both of these films is that chucky and I know this is going to sound weird, but I feel like Chucky takes a bit too long to die in both of these. He comes back a bit too many times for me. This movie's to blame for James, Jamie Bolger's death, wasn't it? No, that was number three. Oh, okay. Number three, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we... Yeah, when we, when we, we World of Strange, maybe. On, well, that's a bit, it's, it's too dark, actually. I've, yeah. I've, read, I've read it into detail. And it's really yeah. horrible. We'll just, we'll just touch on it, but uh, we, won't, um, yeah. we won't go into that. But yeah, that's your first two entries in the Charles Play franchise. Charles Play 1, Charles Play 2. And at some point in the next 12 months, we'll cover the next two. Yeah, that's cool. Right? I, I enjoyed that. Thank you for opening the Charles Play series up to us as a uh, conversation which we will for continue well it was your idea you were very excited and i'm always always more than happy to talk about chucky so yeah, there we go guys it's, it's great doing this because isn't it it's, it gives me an excuse to get in this so speaking of which i think for the old patreon episode i might start going back to my vhs collection again do you know mate i started going for that for the patreon episodes and it's good because it gave me a chance to watch some of these movies and go what the fuck is this shit in my collection I'm looking forward. I always like hearing you find old dusty VHSs that you've well, no idea what they are. Well, it's annoying when I watch them; they're shit. Because then I just give like a review of. You can imagine the sort of review if it's a movie which I don't like. You, everyone knows what I'm like. Fucking shit! This is fucking. <laughs> what the fuck's that? Why that fucking out? Oh my fuck! You know. Brilliant. Well, then do that. That's brilliant. I will. I will. Well, there we go. That's Charles playing one and two. Thumbs up for both of those, really. But we slight both of us slightly prefer the first one. Mm-hmm. Chucky's a fantastic uh, horror icon, and he's a great kid in these first two movies. Little and, doll thumbs up. Yeah, little middle finger from Chucky. Can you take me to the world of the strange? I can't, but I know a man that can. Who can? Bill. Bill can. Bill. Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. It's a strange world. I got strange. That's kind of. That said, like Sylvester Stallone doing Buster Rhymes. Why not? Now, we have just covered off Child's Play 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And that is a little toy that will fuck you up. It will hurt you, won't it, Gav? What? Well, Chucky. Ch- Chucky, yeah. So I figured, let's stick with the theme. Now, before I get into this, have you ever in- been injured by a toy? Either a toy from when you were a child or a toy from one of your children's toys? Oh, I've fucking stepped on enough fucking toys, which have been left yeah. on the floors. Yeah. What's the worst injury you've had from a toy? <clears throat> Shit. Don't know. Nothing. Nothing I- springs to mind of being like so painful that it's memorable. I had a stitch or two in the bottom of my foot when I was a child because. I had a little matchbox, seeing little matchbox cars, mm. but I had an aer- an aeroplane, mm. and I stepped on the, the aeroplane. The, the tail of the aeroplane was very sharp, and it, you know, like on Home Alone, when the nail just goes into his foot, mm. it just did that straight into the bottom of my foot, nice. and I had to have like a stitch or two. Oh, that was painful. I couldn't put any weight on my foot. It was only about four or five, but I can still remember it vividly. Mm. Well, the reason I bring this up, Gav, is because I have got a list of the most dangerous toys ever. Toys that have hurt people. And I thought we could run through this list. And this is a list 
that's been put together by um, a, a personal injury lawyer. It's on their website. I'm not going to give the name because oh. I don't know how to advertise. But this is what they consider to be the top ten most dangerous toys of all. Okay. So I thought we'd run through these. Okay, I think okay. you're going to enjoy some of these. Okay. So number ten on the list is one of these ride-on toy cars that kids sit on you know and ride around it's a cinderella battery powered toy car that came out in 2005 is this kids that are going to be hurt then mainly uh i don't think there was anyone there was only one kid that was hurt in this um but basically the, the okay. worst problem with this car is that the battery shorted out quite a lot and meant that the car would explode or catch fire explode yeah that's not something you just drop in there first of all the car might explode or catch fire it explodes a big word to put in with children's toys <laughs> isn't it well there are 40 incidences explode that happened of the car over leading the car either overheated the seat melted a bit or there one of them exploded and they had to recall the toy no shit stop stop putting little johnny on cinderella's battery powered toy car because it might explode them fucking hell it's a bad one though, isn't it? and that's only number 10 we've got 9 more and they're worse man, than this man the parents must have sued the asses off those companies oh yeah totally well number 9 was a toy that came out in 1950 and 1951 the atomic energy lab which came with a piece of real uranium oh my god um, radioactive uranium so that you could use your own little Geiger counter and you could do little experiments on it and this is 1950 and 51 <laughs> let me just but read you the blurb like in the warehouse where it's all stocked together that's well, what lot. happened when the kids hair started falling that gap why do you think they oh recalled it oh my god <laughs> The kids are starting to get mutated. Um, the Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Laboratory was a radioactive playset made by Alfred Gilbert and sold between 50 and 51. Included a real Geiger sensor and a real piece of uranium in order for you to perform your own radioactive samples. What do you think of that? Mum, mum, look. Beep, 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 Oh, it's very really good. Mom, yeah. Oh, yes, very good, Tommy. Go on. When it came out, it was $49, which is quite a large price tag for the time. Wow. These days, it would be worth $400. Oh, my God. So, yeah. only, the, only the rich kids got it. Yeah. Probably. It said this toy is, is uh, supposed to encourage children to become scientists and to measure for radio, uh, radioactive atomic radiation. But you don't get a hazmat suit for to play with. A child swallowed one of the pieces of uranium and they were worried that this could make children sick. Do you fucking think? Oh, so yeah, yeah, it was withdrawn and brought, taken back off the shelves. Wow. So that's number nine. And we're just Get. speaking of stupidity in this episode. Smoking in hospitals, giving out uranium in children's toys. <laughs> well, number nine is, sticking with Chucky, uh, it's a Cabbage Patch doll called the Snack Time Cabbage Patch doll. Sorry, number eight. The Snack Time Cabbage Patch doll. Now, this was a Cabbage Patch doll that had a, a feature in the mouth where the mouth would chomp and suck in at the same time and you'd get little plastic pieces of food that you're supposed to feed into your little cabbage so patch so kids straight away put his fingers in the mouth well it started with children little girl's hair initially it's getting That's sucked it. in and chewed up and then yes little fingers went in there as well and they had to recall this because yeah it hurt quite a lot of children with a little it says on the box feed me my mouth really moves she really chomps and swallows. Where does yes, this stuff go? Fingers into the stomach, and then I guess you open the back of the door and take it out. That's insane. Several young girls were featured on the news in the 90s after having their hair or fingers caught in the doll. It's in the 90s. It, yeah, mid 90s, this came out. You'd think stupidity had almost been ruled out at this point. Uh, most of the time, any objects like toy food would have been released from the, the door in the doll's stomach. But there were two instances where the young girl's hair was ripped out at the root because the chewing motion was so strong on the doll. So it ripped out a girl's hair. 
Fucking hell. Well, I'm glad no fucking kid put his dick in there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not I mean? in this, I'm not but... saying it's sexually, but you know what kids are like. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, can you imagine? It's fucking hell. Well, moving on then to number seven. Uh, this came out in 2000, and I remember this happening. Something called Sky Dancers. No. Um, which is where you sort of it's like a fairy and uh, she's got like a dress like a helicopter dress so you fire the, the doll up in the air and the dress would expand and spin um, oh, okay. and she'd sort of fly around the room but they were quite heavy and they had very sharp feet so you're basically launching like a sharp object into the air which would then come down and land in people's eyes reports of injuries included one child receiving an injury so bad they went blind uh, several yeah. facial lacer lacerations a child broke their teeth when it hit them in the face fuck. and one child even suffered a broken rib what the fuck this must have been so heavy so they recalled that one <laughs> they did sell 8.9 million of them and they had to try and recall as many as they could people didn't want to give them back so uh, they just took them off the shelves but if you sent them back they would give you some a refund people didn't want to give them back yeah. I want my child to be blind, please. What a weird thing. Sky dancers. I was imagining some people dancing in the sky. Yeah, no. It's more like little ninja fairies flying down with sharp feet and slicing your face open. <laughs> ninja okay. floaters. Yeah. Ninja flyers. Now, number six is quite disturbing. Number six is a toy that was called Aquadots. Mm. Aquadots Design Studio. Also known in some countries as bindies. So these are little dots that you can put on your skin. Um, some of them have glitter in them. Some of them change colour. Some of them are just one colour. And they're like skin decorations for kids. Little beads. Um, when they're wet they become sticky so you put them on your skin and kids can do it you know like under their eyes or girls would love it you know you've seen the shit you know what I'm talking about mm. once they dried uh, they were left on and you could remove them if you scrubbed hard enough but the toy was recalled recalled later the year they were released because it was revealed that part of the adhesive coating was made from a chemical which is basically the date rape drug right uh it's it's the official name i can't remember what the chemical name is but basically kids swallowed it and two children in america and three in australia went into hospital after swallowing beads they went dizzy they vomited went into a coma for up to five days some of them the and that's fuck? because they basically take in rohypnol the date rape drug because it was a part of a chemical that was in these little beads that you'd stick on your own skin um that's pretty fucking crazy that that slipped past the health and safety testing do you know what i mean well what chemicals in this oh don't worry about that yeah i'm thinking somewhere along the line someone has handed some money you think yeah it's pretty mental pretty mental but yeah that, that's one of the most shocking ones on this list for me that one we'll move on then uh, to number five Professor Wacko's exothermic exuberance fuck sounds great doesn't it yeah Professor Wacko's exothermic exuberance chemistry set was originally marketed for children aged 10 and up. The set include, is intended to be an educational toy that teaches kids about heat and fire generated through chemical reaction Right. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Unsurprisingly, yeah. it was found that mixing small amounts of the chemicals in the set, such as glycerin and potassium permanganate, will react with each other, causing mini explosions, heat, and fire. It's a there science were, kit for kids. They're going to mix shit together. There were two instances where houses were burnt to the ground. Oh my god! <laughs> Um, and bottle caps of the above chemicals were switched by mistake. Um, yeah, so basically, of this science they were. kit. This was 1994. <laughs> this isn't the 50s with the uranium. This is 1994. Oh my God, Pro they're all Professor so Wacko. Still, aren't they? 
Mummy, I've got Professor Wacko's exothermic exuberance kit. Right, Great, go off and play. Right, so we're ready to stock and sell out uh, and send out all those science kits we've made, yep. And all the chemicals in there, and it's all fine, yep. There's nothing going to happen. What if we mix them all together in a certain combination? No. Nah. It'd be fine. It's glyph. We're pretty it's sure it'll sure it be fine. What, have we tested it? Yeah, I think Barry tested it, but it's his day off today, so... You can imagine, look, it's not the 50s with uranium, we're it's not that stupid. probably. Anymore. Let's just get it out, come on. We've got some money to make. Next thing you know, two, two houses have been burnt down to the ground. Because of a toy. People are fucking stupid, aren't they? Like, we, we have so many stupid fuckers in this world. We really do. <laughs> fucking hell. We do those. People do, do some stupid shit. Well, <laughs> number four on the list is magnetics, with an X, magnetics magnet building sets for ages six and up. But they were recalled after there was one death and 26 injuries requiring emergency surgery. Children were swallowing these tiny magnets. Of course they were. It's because it, it's magnets um, as well. It was like the worst thing to swallow. They're incredibly strong magnets, these ones. These are the ones where you can build things with them. They all clip together. Oh, um, but if the child swallowed a second magnet... Yeah, it would fuck. Or something metal, the pieces would attract to each other within the intestines. they would make a hole in through. the stomach, yeah. Yeah, and it perforated all these children's stomachs. Um, one of them died, and 26 were in, left with severe injuries. Magnets and children just don't mix like young children like I bought Daisy that giant magnet once for a birthday do you remember in that toy shop the amount um, of times the purple huge. one the purple one which I yeah, still occasionally yeah. see around once in a while um, I that's huge the amount Can't of times I've had to explain that. don't put this near the TV just don't put it on the uh, TV don't put it on my no. don't put it on my Mac don't put it on my Mac you know <clears throat> sorry about that I should have thought about that when I pulled that first sorry <laughs> Okay, well, moving on to number three. We're in the 40s now, Gav. This is the Austin Magic Pistol. Oh, I was thinking Austin Martin. Okay, sorry. So the Austin, uh, the popular Austin Magic Pistol was marketed in the 40s. It was a toy space gun, mm. but it used calcium carboid, which, when mixed with water, causes an explosion launching a ping pong ball out of its muzzle at an alarming rate of speed needless to say they were taken off the market after reports of fireball related injuries started pouring in so it would a cause an explosion a fireball at you well it was it's supposed to just shoot the ping pong ball but the explosion was so most of the time it would catch the ping pong ball on fire and then, <laughs> then come flying at you I recently, uh, me and Elijah at a car boot sales, well, no, a couple of months ago now, picked up a couple of Nerf guns. I was like, nice, check out that Nerf gun. And he's got one which loads out the side, you load it all up and load it in, it costs, it's like the minigun almost, like nice. a Predator. Yeah. And then I've got another one, not as good, he always gets a better one than me. Mine only loads four. Anyway, so I was like, fuck it. So I ordered 100 Nerfs for me and him. So me and him had 50 each. We sit on the other side of the living room and just start shooting at each other and stuff. And that's scary enough, having a six-year-old shooting like, just a Nerf at me or scared for my life at times. Not Let alone a fucking firing pin, a ping pong ball on fire. Fucking hell. Well, apparently some of the guns actually just exploded in the hands of the children. Brilliant. Well, I suppose you'd win if you're playing... <laughs> like, I won. Your gun exploded. But, Wow. So there we go, 1940s, that was recalled. They took that one off the market, not surprised. So that was number three, we've got two more on this list. Brilliant, I can't wait. So, it, okay, this should be in the top 100. So the second most dangerous toy of all time, with the most injuries, is something called jarts, or lawn darts, you might know them as. Yeah, yeah, Do, yeah. Yeah. All the rage in the 70s and 80s, lawn darts. Throw them up in the air and then they come down on the uh, numbers, yeah. Great big spikes on the end, and of course... You can only imagine the amount of injuries when these came back down and landed on a child or an adult who was sunbathing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, Johnny, you just play over there. I'm just going to get some sun over here. Um, they got completely banned by 1988 in America. Um, and there was a warning issued by the company that if you found any or had any, you need to, to either destroy them, bin them completely, or, or, or send them back to the manufacturer. Um, but it is still legal to sell 
these part like the replacement parts to them right now um there are four deaths in total and there are six thousand injuries until they were banned shit that's why it's number two because four people died and six thousand people were injured from throwing but you can imagine i'm just gonna it's like darts but you just throw it up in the air yeah. and it might come down and hit you yeah I thought they were like blunt ended. And no, they they're, they're like a, it's about as sharp as a dart. Pretty sharp. That's crazy. Yep. And the number one, Gav, and this is going to freak you out now, the number one most dangerous toy ever sold is a trampoline. That doesn't surprise me. Because you've got one of them, haven't you? Have you still got the trampoline? Hell yeah. In lockdown, yeah. Uh, the early lockdown of the early 2020s uh we 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 spent a lot of time just jumping on trampoline i was getting like my daily exercise at one point you know <laughs> trampolining just like yeah so uh, <laughs> well then? the trampoline is the number one most dangerous toy of all time uh, according to the American Association of Orthopaedic Surgeons, there were 246,875 trampoline injuries every year in the United States between 1990 and 1999. And there were 11 trampoline-related deaths during that time. People's necks and shit. Now, here's a health and safety warning. If someone you know suffers a trampoline-related injury, mm-hmm. your immediate response would depend on how severe the injury is. If the injury suffers a sprain or a broken bone, you need to take them to hospital. But if there's any suspicion of a potential spinal neck injury, yeah. call the emergency services. Yeah. And you should not attempt to move the victim until the ambulance arrives. Yeah. I don't know why. I just thought I'd read that out. You can re- <laughs> I don't know either. You can really, um, really, uh, yeah, really fuck yourself up. Just, just, just the bounce being at the wrong place and you coming down you're just pulling muscles and spraining your back and just pulling shit out so easy mm. we've we've got a real small one which is basically a kid's one but I, I I jump on it yeah it's got a net around it as well do you still have the net around it no 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 I ended up uh, digging a hole in the ground no because the net all got broken oh yeah you've so got the so hole so in it, it was high right. up without a net around it and the kids are going to fall off it so I dug a hole into the ground like a crater and I put it into the ground. Um, it's not flush with the actual soil ground, like the, the ground level. Um, it's just a little bit higher, but yeah, it's dug into the ground. So it, well, it's quite cool. So like, if they fall off, you're, you're literally stepping off it. So. Yeah. Well, there we go. I think out of all of those, the ones that I'm most shocked by are the, the ones with chemicals and uranium and stuff in them. That is insane. Um, and the one that's got the date rape drug in the glue you used to stick it to your skin that is crazy but again these things happened and you know there's lots of stuff that gets taken off the market here and there you know and uh mm. we live and learn as human beings but yeah that's your crazy dolls crazy dolls and crazy magnets and crazy trampolines yep i thought there'd be some roller skates in there you know slipping on a roller skate at the top of the stairs yeah, or there's no skateboard injuries going on there standing on lego in the middle of the night i've knocked myself out skateboarding Oof. Woken up I knocked myself out on the well, with the toilet once, but that's a different story. Knocked one out on the toilet, probably. No, I knocked. I slipped oh. and I hit my head on the toilet. Right. Let's... Woke woke up with a black eye next to the toilet and thought, "What the fuck's just happened?" I've woken up next to the toilet next to my mate. How the fuck did we get here? <laughs> well, was it even with him that night? That was was that thing. when you went to Australia with Donald Pleasance? <laughs> when did I do that? <laughs> When you wake up next to him in the morning. Oh God! Wiping my wiping my Johnson on the curtains. <gasps> Look at that movie, man. That movie fucked me up for a while. I thought about that movie heavily for the next two months. No other movie could get into my mind. I was just like, waking fright, waking fright, waking fright, waking fright. Yeah. Fright, waking fright. Very good one. That if one. If you haven't seen that movie, watch that movie. If not, listen to our review of it. We did an exploitation episode a couple of summers ago. It's good. It's really well, there good. we go, guys. That is killer toy. So those are the ones to avoid. If someone buys you some chemicals or some lawn darts or a trampoline, don't combine them because there's definitely going to be a death. Yeah. Juggling dirt darts on a trampoline. All right. Well, that was one of the strange. Bill, if you'd like to take us out of here, Billy. Please. 
That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, ghouls, non-gendered binary people. Not, and good guy, good guys and good girls. Binary, isn't it? Getting all this all wrong. Good guys and good girls and cabbage patch people. And good guy dolls too. Don't fight with a truck. That was a good episode. That was fun. Loved it. I love a bit of child's play action. Um, looking forward to coming back to that franchise. But I better tell you what we've got coming up next, Gav. Please do. Okay. Well, our next episode is found footage. You requested us to visit, revisit that world. Part of found, found footage. footage, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, we are. Uh, I'll try and get together some sort of more uh, uh, up-to-date list from the last time we did it because it's, it's going to be hard. Uh, what well, was it about three years ago? Maybe we did that. Well, the weird, the weird thing is, Gav, there's now there's now genres within the subgenre of fine footage because now within horror you've got the subgenre of fine footage, but within that you've got like the um, haunted house find footage movies that there seems to be a lot of now so there's oh, like a yeah, sub, there's sub genre yeah, yeah yeah there's lots of different types um, the home invasion um, ones there's a, a yeah. news report what type ones CCTV footage type ones there's all sorts um, yeah and I, we're trying to do some sort of list of the ones which recent stuff we've seen it'd be quite yeah. hard I'll have to start going back through shit going uh, maybe just the last five years I think I don't want to rehash stuff we've talked about before so yeah maybe we just do the more recent ones like we could say like the foul footage 3D movie that you know oh yeah well the two films we'll be covering for that episode are Hell House LLC mm. very very creepy haunted house CCTV yeah bank. I watched the third one recently so it'd be nice to go back to that original one and I think I've only just seen the director's one which we were asked to review once part time when yeah, it was released so the director's cut and the standard version are both available on Amazon Prime, so we're probably going to just watch the standard one for that. And the other one we're going to cover is a bit of Bigfoot fine footage action, aren't we? Mm. Exists. Mm. Mm. Which uh, you and I both like that one, so that'll be fun to go back and watch that one again. I haven't watched it for a while. So that's episode 103. Episode 104 is going to be a little Vincent Price special. I was going to try and do Vincent hacks and then I, I can't do it, so... He's one of those ones it's quite hard to do. Really hard. We're going to be covering the Abominable Dr. Fibes, or Phoebes, and we're also going to be covering Madhouse. And I've got so here. take a look at that guy. Can you see this? Oh, you, yes, Vincent Price, Legacy, UK. Wow. So we might have a little bit of extra on that episode then, Gav. I don't know. I've got, uh, basically, I was given once upon a time uh, a business card. It's Vincent Price Legacy. This card's a bit knackered. Um, basically, uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Peter Fuller. I don't know if he'd be able to come on board or record something. He he looks after the Vincent Price estate. Um, awesome. Um, so I said to him, well, one day we're going to talk about Vincent Price. So... I will message the, the gentleman and see if he can come on or just record something talking about what he does with the Vincent Price estate because that'd be quite interesting. I think that'd be really cool. And we'll also cover his career, you know, and some of the highlights and stuff of his career because he's a real horror icon up there with the Christopher oh, yeah. Lee. He's so just, just incredible, yeah. Yeah, amazing. So that's episode 104. And that means, Gav, episode 105 will be our Christmas special. <laughs> Mm. That's, that's not that long. That's not that far away. It's not that far away. Uh, right. So that means for Christmas, I can reveal that we will be watching and reviewing Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yep. And Bill Murray in Scrooge. Rich Donner. True. That'd be good. So that'd be fun. Mm. So that's oh, it. Feels weird revealing our Christmas episode already, but like you said, it's not that far away. So well, yeah, and and we we'll have to see if we can do that because the worst case scenario is if anything happens, something's happened, we just flip flip it. Then Vincent Price would come after Christmas. Just saying, I'm just covering our bases there. You that's never, very you true. Never, you that's never know. That 2020's been a bit weird. Godzilla may be attacking us by then. Anything could happen. You never know what's going to come out of the sewers. You had anything more spooky go on in the old uh, house? No, nothing at all. Not since that last time. That when the door shut. Because that was our Halloween episode. Yeah. yeah. 
the door shut, didn't it? That was weird. Yeah. yeah. But no, nothing at all, really. But that's what that's what we got coming up, and yeah, Christmas is coming. We've had Halloween. Before we know it, your birthday will be here, and we'll be doing all of this again next year. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a bit weird this year. 2020, the year that never was. But we've managed to bang out more podcasts because I've been able to, well, both just been able to set dates a bit more regular because not working so much. Well, I haven't been working as much. You've been you've been fairly steady still, haven't you, this year? Yeah, I've worked. I've just worked all the way through. <laughs> yeah. stop just from home, really. Oh, That's man. all. Yeah. Um, but I've managed to appear on, you know. Um, uh, bite sized cinema podcast at yeah, least once or twice a month. Yeah. Um, I've been on, um, I recently recorded with Ricky Morgan for his show, Rad Movie Rama, where we covered the classic 80s rom com Mannequin. Oh, yeah, it's a canon movie. So that that's something to listen out for, guys, as well. And Gav, you've, you've started up your side cast as well. Um, yeah, High Strangers podcast, and we just did uh, Pazuzu Algarad, um, just a dude who is a bit of a crazy guy. Uh, check him out. And, Not and, to mention, we've been doing a bunch of Patreon episodes as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been quite good this year. We've been knocking out a lot more stuff, actually. Knocking them out? Yes, yes. I love knocking them out. And I've been doing a little bit more stuff filming-wise as well, so it's starting to get back a little bit more, which is quite nice. Well, hopefully 2021 will be um, just as productive and better for everybody. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, let's do some admin and then we can say our goodbyes. All right. So that was episode 102. So as always, the podcast on Haunted Hill is a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. You can go and find out more about them and all the other shows on the network if you visit legionpodcast.com. Um, you can find out more about them on Facebook. Just go on Legion, uh, Legion Podcast, and you can find us the podcast on Haunted Hill on Facebook. That's where we're most active. Um, we've got billions of people on, not billions, we've got about 400 people on there. <laughs> we've got about 400 people on there we've chatting got away. billions of people on there. It's like it's a, a full-on network. World. It's like a city. Um, you can email me and Gav directly if you want to, um, and that's the podcast on Haunted Hill at outlook.com that's our email address we're available on most platforms including spotify youtube uh podknife apple podcast addict um and podbean app and you can do reviews on those we do get the odd review come in and we're always happy to take a new one so please guys if you like what you hear and you fancy writing a sentence about us on one of these we'd love it because it really helps us grow as a, as a show um we're on twitter as well at haunted podcast we're on instagram the podcast on haunted hill insta and if you want to know more about our production company deadbolt films just visit deadboltfilms.com uh, we've got a comic coming out we've got uh, features we've got shorts the comic um, um, Sorry to interrupt very quickly. The comic, I think, has been uh, uh, sent to Tom, okay. and he's got all the copies at the moment to be posted out to whoever. I know quite a lot of people fund helped crowdfund that, so um, yes, you'll be getting a crowd, copy if you did. Crowdfunders, which I am one of. Yeah. And Beyond <laughs> is still out. Beyond is still out now. Uh, the last short film uh, on there, which we got, we're also crowdfunded. That's on the Deadbolt uh, Dead YouTube channel now. Check it out. Yeah, so YouTube, just type in Deadbolt Films. Um, they're on Instagram as well, Deadbolt Films. And we're on Twitter, just at Deadbolt Films, or one word. But yeah, if you the main website is deadboltfilms.com. All that stuff we've just talked about, including this website and everything, uh, this podcast and everything else is on there as well. And Joseph is missing, is going to be finishing. We've like, filmed all the, pretty much all the episodes, last episode and stuff. Um, and that's going to be coming to an end as well, that web webisode series. We just knocked out something to do. This so year. loads of content loads of content on there um, mm. we're veering to comics short films long films um, you know podcasts whatever it is it's and, on there for you and we oh no we can do it in a minute sorry carry on um, and finally patron if you want to support us and become one of our patron supporters help us to grow as a show and support us as well then you can do that by visiting patron and just typing in the podcast on haunted hill and as always thank you very very much to our patrons who i will now name check we've got rj mccready lem yow kate pollock rachel elizabeth sarah Kay, kevin s fife jamie salmon jill smith matthew godley and josh myers who are our patrons. Thank you ever so much, guys, for all your support, everything you do. And if you do become a patron like those awesome people I just listed, you will get 
super secret exclusive bonus episodes um usually one in between each main episode of the podcast on haunted hill ranging from about half an hour to about just over an hour where gav and i Dav's, dan's dungeon in gav's grotto just talk absolute shit about whatever we want really for that short period of time well it's good uh, i just did um talking about different youtube channels i check out um and it's quite interesting because there's no point i'm going to really talk about that really with you on the main show no just like i talked about tv shows from the 80s that i watched like knight rider and, and i did the incredible the other week i wouldn't have done that, DJ? yeah and, uh, did, I did. You, did you did you like my little conversation with christopher lee i was almost having i loved it we playing it? in the background. You were like, sorry about that, guys. Hang on, let me just do that. There we go. That's better. Wrong speed. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I put a record. <laughs> it was amazing because I had to I had to podcast it was standing good. It was... up because I had a mic set up while I was DJing. So I was just listening to what you guys listened while I DJed off the cuff because I couldn't really cue it up. Uh, the I, I also talked about um, Twin Peaks on the most recent one. I just went into great detail about my favorite characters and episodes and scary moments so mm. it's really fun guys and it is a reward for our patrons and um, i plan on doing a little i don't know if i'll do it as a little video series or not but i'm gonna do a little video um where i'm gonna show my vhs because it's great i talk about the vhs what stuff i've got but i've got some vhs like my texas chainsaw mask original vhs signed by toby hooper I'm going to film myself showing some of them and I'll put that up as a patron exclusive like video. I know it's not very interesting, but I thought I could do some visual stuff as well. Yeah, well, I'm I'm planning on a little video, just a little Merry Christmas to our patrons. So you might get a cheeky little video from me as well. And Gav might want to do something like that. We could we could maybe sing a song, a Christmas song to our patrons. Should we supporters. do like a David Bowie? And, um, <laughs> being Crosby, well, I, you're in the house and I sort of knock on the door Me and you go... Off. Hello, who are you? Da, I'm Big. Yeah. Do you like songs? Well, I like the labyrinth. I don't know. Weird... We could do because we could put the video side by side of each other and do it. If you just sang it, I'll sing it. I'll hopefully match them. If not, it'd just be awful. But oh yeah, because we're fantastic singers, Gav, aren't we? Obviously. Da, I think we need to go right well it's a good night from gav i was also gonna say though very 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 we are actually on the case of getting some t-shirts with the new logo with the new logo we will be getting new t uh, uh, not new um first time getting actually t-shirts lined up and we will get various sizes and you can buy them direct from us so it's not a um you don't have to go you know anything else or whatever you can get it from us tell us exactly what we want and we can post it and go what size no, just... give us your address and we'll post it out to you and hopefully um, we can cut that middle person out a little bit to make it cheaper so yeah we're aiming for a pretty good price actually on that and patrons you will get a t-shirt if you want one of course for free you'll just well, no, you'll give just us get your one, give us the address you'll and... just give us your size and your address and we'll okay, that to you. post that out to you um so yeah that's exciting mm. that's a good good that'll be a lovely way to end the year Mm-hmm. Well, there we go. So it's a good night from um, Chucky, of course. Indeed. Let's drop one in. Oh, sorry, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good night from Jimmy Savile. Oh, my God. I didn't know where to go, and it's the first name that popped in my head. It's it- a good night from someone juggling uranium lawn darts on a trampoline. Oh my god. That'd do. It's a good note from me. Yeah. And it's a good, it's night a good from note from you. Well, that was episode 102. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you for episode 103. Take it easy, people. Take Stay it's safe. It's and, it's and do check out like the toys you get. Like Yesterday, there was a, like, a yard sale thing over the road. It's not a yard. It's just like a field. Some people were selling stuff to try and make money to grow, put some plants and stuff out. Some ladies... I went over and I was like, just take what you want, just good donations. I gave a fiver and they, I got a little table thing for Daisy. I got myself a glue gun because I didn't know what else to take. Because so I was trying to give them some money for flowers. And um, Elijah got this teddy, this old teddy. It's about this big. It's so firm. It doesn't do no movement. It's just like the most serious fucking teddy in the world. I'm fucking serious, not my teddy. And, Jesus. And I put it through the washing machine and washed it and everything. But it's just uh, and and Elijah's like, I don't like it. It's quite scary. And Daisy's like, I think it's watching me as I walk around the room. <laughs> I was like, don't say that. So I've had to have it with me sleeping at night times. 
But it hasn't moved. But I keep checking to see if it's moving or not. So what? Can I'm you saying, send me a picture of that later? Yeah, please? yeah. I'll go do it in a minute. I'll take a photo for you. Thank what you. I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, check the toys. Have you checked the toys? Check the toys are in the basement. Check the toys. And that's it. Good night. Night. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon. <laughs>